Okay. Hello. Howdy, everybody. Good evening. Please, somebody put in the chat if you can hear me or not. I have still yet to take the class from Aaron Imholt on how to start these shows. So this is going to be a cold open. I see MSO can see me. This must be good. Uh, as you can see, Aaron is not here yet. He absolutely might be. I don't know where he is right now. Maybe he's with his other ladies. I'm not sure yet. In fact, I almost didn't make it here today at all. Um, so I can't imagine the tragedy that would have uh, gone down had neither of us showed up. Um, hey, guys, let's stop being a piece of shit in the chat, huh? Let's not do that. You will not stick around very long. Okay. Cold open. I'm here. This is going to be a great show. I'm very excited. I wore yellow for you guys tonight. I know that's one of your favorite shirts uh, for me to wear is the yellow ones. Um, this one I don't think I've ever worn on here because it's a little bit revealing. I usually wear a sweater over it. I have one to my left. It's rather warm in the basement today, so this is what we're doing. Um, Hello, everybody. I, I see... Here, this is going to lead into my story I'm about to tell all of you. So I effed up my Buick's girlfriend is in the chat and says, my boyfriend is glad you made it home. Yes. This person saved me today. I had no idea um, how bad this was about to get. But thanks to an OG listener tonight, I am here. I did not get in an accident thanks to this man. Um, I would like to send him something nice, so I hope he's going to message me. I believe maybe we've messaged already before, but, um, oh yeah, Aaron's already in the chat. Give April all your money. I'm sorry, Aaron. I don't really know how to copy and paste all this shit into the chat over and over again. Um, but there is a, our goal is pinned to the top, uh, 250 by 930. No, wait, 250 by nine o'clock to go to 930. I believe that's how he's planning this out today. That's the usual one. Um, like I said, I don't know what Aaron's up to could be anything. He's a man that really gets around, <laughs> as I'm told. I've heard some stories. Um, maybe his girlfriends will be in the chat tonight. Uh, Red Fox Mad with 499, thank you, says, let's knock out the goal before Aaron comes back. I actually think that'd be really cool. I'm going to have a beer with you guys or two. I think that'd be cool. Look, I'm a little uh, jittery because of what happened to me tonight. Uh, it's not even that Aaron's not here. I've actually opened the show for almost a whole hour by myself before. Uh, ooh, I do like this part, though, when people in the chat start theorizing why nobody's here. Um, Fauci's Pangolin already says the gay 90s again, which, by the way, I've wanted to go there for years. And until I gained uh, some people in my life, the most uh, beloved people in my life, a few of them, including Aaron, I had never been able to go because I'm not going to go by myself. It's not a safe endeavor. Uh, the gay 90s is maybe one of the most fun places I've ever been uh, for a good night, good night out, uh, drinks, dancing, lights, sweating, everything. It's foam parties. I've been to my first foam party ever uh, recently, which was really, really fun. Um, definitely check out the gay 90s sometimes. It doesn't really matter if you're gay, and I think all of us are a little bit gay anyways. Somewhere in there, we just don't like to admit it. And that's okay. All right. Let's get to these uh, theories, and then I'm going to get to this story as to why I almost didn't make it either. <laughs> Fine. All right. Let's see. Uh, loaded wrench. Aaron thinks uh, he thinks Aaron's in jail. Raz of Chaz says Aaron's pooping tonight instead of April. LOL. Yes, I. My ass needed a break. Uh, look, it gets worn out from time to time. Amanda Hug and Kiss says jail. Now, okay, on top of these jail theories, I would like to know, if you do believe that he's in jail, what would he be in jail for? Which is very interesting. And how could he be messaging the chat, or is that really me? Maybe his account is my sock account. Oh, God. I hate this right now, you guys. I'm getting the best phone call ever. My phone's not connected to the board because it never has been. But can you read this? Oz is calling me right now, and I can't talk to him because... Okay, you know what? Here. We're going to answer it. We're going to put it on speaker. Hold on. Hey, buddy. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. How's it going? I just want to give you creds. Like, you're doing a great job. Thank you. What are you up to? 
I miss Drink. you. <laughs> Did you say drinking? Yes. Would you like to tell the audience what you're drinking tonight? Jaeger and uh, Bud Light. Yeah. <sighs> the usual. Now, how yeah. did you ever get started on Jaeger? I'd like uh, to know. That was a college-like experiment. You know, right. So. Most people leave the Jaeg in college like I did. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I just want to give you congratulations. You're doing a fucking great job. So, really? So. Well, thank yeah. you. That's a huge Good honor coming from you. Uh, obviously, nobody forgets about you. We miss you. We'd still love to have you come in and do a show every now and then. Yep, I would love to do that. But, yeah, just wanted to give you uh, cred. So keep rocking it. I'll talk to you soon. Oh, thanks, buddy. We love you. Yep, take care. Bye. Ah, look at this. I can figure shit out on the fly. I hope Aaron's proud. I didn't want to let that phone call go because I knew Oz must be listening since he called me as soon as the show starts. He calls me every now and then, and he's always had a couple Bud Lights and some Yag shots in there, but... He's always very friendly. We love him. We miss him. Hopefully we see him soon. Okay, Red Fox Mad, what happened to you, April? I will tell you, oh my God, this chat has gone bananas and I lost it just now. I'm starting to realize Aaron's frustrations with this shit. On occasion, you can't keep up. You can't, if you scroll just wrong or it's like a super chat comes in, the shit moves. Um, yeah, Aaron's currently out looking for his third wife. I hope so, man. He deserves everything in the world. I'm just kidding. I want to stick around. That'd be cool. Did Aaron get into the apple pie again? Probably. It's delicious. Um, Aaron's leaving an upper decker. I hope not because then he might have to look for a third wife. I'd be a bit upset. <laughs> he went on a queso run. That seems fine. I'd be into that. Get dressed and get off the shitter, Aaron. <laughs> what beer you drink? Uh, this beer is shitty right now. This is not my favorite. I have a Modelo. Um, my like go-to... I know this is going to start a fight in the chat. When I go to really basic beers when I'm not buying anything nice that I actually like or probably between Modelo and McGolden. I'm sorry. I know that's going to rub some people the wrong way. That's just the, uh, the casual drinking days. Um, other than that, I, I really like a whole bunch of beers. This is just the shitty one. Um, yes, Turbs McGurk, there is a call-in number, but it's not my phone. It's Aaron's phone, and he's not here. I'm sorry. Scarface says Aaron's in the hot box or misbehaving, probably. I hope they throw some cold water on him soon so he can feel better. And they let him out so he can breathe. We're not George Floyding around here. Okay. We have D. Guleg with $2. Thank you. And it says, finally, the show we wanted. On occasion, I do really enjoy that Aaron has me do this. It's not for me all the time. But I do like some time to just talk and not be stomped over by this Big, bulky man with his big, booming voice. Just kidding. That was supposed to be complimentary. Indus Buzz, Biz Dis Dis Buzz just says this. Oh, my God. What, is he, what did he say before that? I was hoping he just said this as in he liked this. Oh, he says, where's the woman that is usually on this show? I'm right here. Oh, they mean Aaron's a lady. I'm sorry. I'm sure that he'll be around sometime this week. Oh, 383 Novocaine with my theory. Aaron is hung over from two beers and a shot of apple pie. Yes, they had some fun this morning. Guys, I still would like to knock out at least half this goal before he gets home. I think that'd be cool. Home from jail or his wife or whatever. Not me. Um, Freedom's Lunch going to bed, but we'll be watching replay. Great to see you do a solo. I do like uh, flexing these muscles every now and then. Um. I don't do it often. I think this is maybe the third time. Oh, my God. I think this is maybe the third time I've ever done this. Uh, the longest I've done it is probably like 40-something minutes to an hour. It's not so bad. Uh, you guys help. Plus, I already have like a bunch of my own personal stories on top of all this shit that he prepped for me that I don't know about yet. But I'm very excited to get to it. Um, knock out that goal. We'll go a little extra longer. This interests me sometimes. We have somebody who is concerned trolling right now. John Bear says, quit the show, April. You are only eye candy for the show. Aaron is using you. Now, sometimes when that type of stuff happens, like it doesn't bother me. Um, it's fine. I, I just wish on occasion that you would give the almost 30-year-old a little bit of agency over herself. 
I I do believe that I would have avenues of quitting the show if I felt I was being used. But on the flip side, there maybe is something to it, and maybe Aaron is just using me. See, now, I thought Johnny was the pretty one on the show. <laughs> so maybe, but I think I'm in second place in the looks category. Aaron obviously can't be included. He's the boss. So I'm not going to sexually harass the boss here. Unlike he does to me. Amanda Hug and Kiss says DUI. Uh, oh, t- Sean, you're being so testy tonight. Fuck fan theories. No, they're fun. DWI, stealing cake, light bulb in the ass. I've heard of that before. No shit. Somehow people get light bulbs in their ass and I don't understand. How do you do that without breaking it? You must be gaping. <laughs> Um, Aaron got a ticket in February. Yeah, we know. Everyone gets tickets. It's fine. Oh, this is fun, too. Dale Earnhardt says he's not in jail. She'd be a lot happier if so. No, I would not. Contrary to popular belief, that man has made my life uh, much happier. So he's not always the asshole you think he is. Uh, Speeding. We didn't forget about Oz. Never. I had to take that phone call, even though it had to be on speakerphone. I hope you all heard it. I see there's some super chats coming in. Just hold on. Keep them coming. I will get to them. Thank you so much. Oz is drunk. Yes, but is there any other way to be on a Monday night? I have not been drunk in a very long time, I don't think, actually. I don't drink enough to get drunk anymore. I just... People used to tell me that after 25, it's all downhill once you start drinking and getting hungover, that the hangovers get worse. You don't want to get up the next day. You waste your whole second day. I'm not here for it. So usually I, even like in a span of like a whole night, let's say like four to six hours drinking, I try to only stick to at most four drinks and mixing waters. I know that's gay as hell, but I guess that's me. So I'm just a beard. Oh my God. Loaded Wrench is saying that the, uh, the charge for being in jail would be sexual assault on a dying animal. God damn. Now is the animal dying before he sticks his dick in it or after? Or during. I don't know. The thing's massive. I'd think it'd bleed out first. Uh, hashtag Aaron was never real, says Skeezy. Of course. You guys. Your little trolls don't bother me. You're so cute. Aaron's out selling ass to save the family. Of course. Oh my god. Okay, something won't move. Aaron! Okay, I got it. You ever do that? You froze the chat? Okay, stop. You guys are going insane. Uh, <laughs> Jew guy is watching. Cool. I'm very excited. Jew guy can be my biggest fan. He used to be very attractive, by the by. I don't know if he knows this or not. He probably doesn't, but I've said it on the show a few times. That man, this Jew guy that Colm is talking about, used to be one of the very most attractive men I knew, at least in streaming or podcasting or whatever the fuck you call his thing that he does about once every couple months or once a year if you're lucky when he gets a bad case of sickness. Very attractive man. I'm not sure what's happening to him. I haven't seen him in a while. Johnny Castile says the real steel checking in. Also the real Johnny, but Johnny is sexy. Yes, he is. Johnny is a soldier and he is remarkably sexy. Who needs legs when you look that good? (laughs) I don't know how to get to Rumble. Oh God, there it is. Okay, I'm going to keep getting through these. And then I'm going to go to Rumble. E-Rock is in the chat, but fucking retracts his... Why do you do this? I want to read your stuff, Eric. He retracts his stuff. Magnum DUI says Melton is the P. Diddy of chat. Probably. Getting raided all over the place. Can I kiss your belly button? I don't know. For a price, maybe. Knock out that goal and we'll talk. (laughs) No, no, no. Okay, so I, okay, I effed up my Buick's girlfriend. Mitch says, sorry for making you feel like he was a creeper. No, no, not at all. I'm going to get to the story uh, in due time here. I'm trying to make the chat uh, feel wanted and all this stuff first, and they're being very silly tonight. I'm going to have a good story here where I, I'm going to have to mention this guy on a couple shows because he's very nice, and I'm assuming uh, he's messaged me by now. I haven't had time to look. Uh, him and Matt are spooning. Yes, maybe they're drinking and spooning and chatting over bullshit life throws at you. Where's the hot one? Says Zeke. Kyle, never going to get me. I don't know where he is. He just messaged me. I was on my way home from seeing family today. And uh, he messages me. He's like, look, I'm going to have to have you start at 7 tonight because I've got something to do. And I don't know if what kind of doing that is. But um, 
He's like, look, do you think you could start at seven and be without me for a little while? I guess. I don't want to be fired. King Yeti says April was pulled out of shit by Aaron. Now she lives in piss. That's an upgrade. Yes, I would much rather uh, live in piss than shit. People call that water sports, I believe. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Uh, oh, my God. Vitaly <laughs> Malirovs with $5 says Aaron is probably getting initiated into a skinhead gang right now. Maybe because then you'd all have to or you'd at least get to stop looking at that hairline. I'm hoping. But the thing is, I think you have to wax it off because you could still see the buzz marks. I don't know. Maybe he is in a game. No hangovers if you drink all day. Amen, brother. Oh, my God. Uh, shit. Hey, Aaron, where's April? My hairline is not that bad. Knock it off. <laughs> you unalived Aaron. Good job, April. No. Lossless. I would never. He'd have to do that to himself. I think. Because I think you can only do that to yourself. Oh, my God. What's the goal? Michael B says, what's the goal? Uh, two fifty. No, wait. Fucking hell. Oh, shit. You guys have been sending in um, contributions. I'll have to go back and add them up. It's not 250 anymore. You've knocked some of that off. Thank you so much. I will go back and add them if he's not here. I'm sorry. You've been knocking it down. It was originally 250 away from 930. So thank you. We'll add that up in a little bit. Um, people are talking about Gordy. I'm the other Gordy. Uh, you're not spelling his name right. Put some respect on his name. Um, shit, balls, Raz of Chaz, member for 22 months. You can't listen to Aaron when it comes to hangovers or drinking. My 10-month-old 10, 10 has more of a tolerance than Aaron. Are you putting booze in the titty milk? I hope not. Oh, TVA Dan, Aaron cooked by Red Bar. I don't think so. I would choose Aaron over Red Bar any goddamn day. He's far more attractive than him. Even when I said, like, he was a good-looking dude, like, that doesn't, uh... That doesn't negate how attractive Aaron is to me, so toodles. <laughs> All right. Um, oh, my God, you guys. April, pimp the goal more. Uh, it's less than 250. I'm going to guess it's about, like, 220 away from 930, guys. I don't want to pimp the goal. Just knock it out. I like that a lot better. I trust you guys. <laughs> don't be jealous. Don't be jealous. Uh, K-Max McDonald, who? Johnny Depp, isn't that your crush, April? Yes, I would have to get a pass from Aaron because I value his opinion, but yes. I'd have to give him one, too, then, which he'd obviously pick. If Aaron wanted a celebrity pass to folk, obviously it has to be Eric Church, right? Where God, who else is he like? Eric Church, Ewan McGregor, or Edward Norton. I think those are at the top of his list. April, do it every 12 minutes. We need to know the nut for the day. Hey, like I said, and there is a message pinned to the top. You can see it. I just have to adjust. Hobo, I do not suck at this. I'm very comfortable. Mm -mm -mm. Okay, you guys are being awesome. I have a story to get to. I also have to check out the Rumble chat. Uh, somebody with, oh no. Finkelstein shit kid with nine ninety nine. This one's not for Melton. Thank you very much. <laughs> a gay pass, yes, Michael. We can all do gay passes. It's twenty twenty four now. That shit is not to be ashamed of. Um, yeah, Paul Dano. That's a good one. But he'd have to play the slave song for him. Otherwise, it doesn't happen. Answer my super chat, April from Ozone. I didn't see you shoot us an Ozone one. Ew! I hear noises behind me. Get out of here. It's my show now. Fan funding. Here we go, Ozone. I'm going to see if you left one. You did. Ozone with four ninety nine. dollars <laughs> Who are you? Sexual harassment. Ah! No. <laughs> no. Oh, fuck. You have to sit in my seat for a couple minutes. What? Bullshit. Oh, shit. I don't have a mic. That's true. Fuck me. You fucking Jew. Here. Ready? Take. Fucking hell. Take mine for a couple minutes. You're going to be over You homo? No, this is great. Uh, Ozone says, Kevin said he wants you to be a guest on MLC. You in? No. I am. Aaron is. Aaron, I'm in. Aaron's forever uh, into uh, Kevin. I'll go on, Kevin. Your uh, audience, I'll tell you this about Kevin's audience. They don't, they're not good at talking shit. I don't remember MLC, Men Love Come. Men love come. Men love come. No, that audience, cocks. they send in know. super chats and they're horrible at shit talking. Like, it, I'd fall asleep. Hey. 
I, they'd write in and they'd be like, I'm going to get Aaron. And I just, we tried this on that Ray DeVito podcast. They tried like hell to get me. And I'm just like, guys, you're boring me. You're going through the motions. So, I oh mean, it would make Kevin a shitload of money. I would be one of Kevin's biggest guests ever. And I'd get him some of his biggest numbers and draw him some of his most money. But uh, his audience is really not good at talking shit. Like, that whole universe is not good at talking shit. They're just weird we, we and, like, mention, obsessive remember? and strange. But that, that, that universe isn't for us. Well, he asked me. if I, He asked well, you if you would go on. I and said I, I would. simply said no. Aaron would. Um, hey, would you do me a quick favor? Mm -mm. Go ahead. Add this shit up. Would I go down? I already have. Oh. All of them? Yeah. I was adding it How up as you How do you do that went. and drive or whatever you were doing? I'm not good at either one of them. All right. There are a couple I missed in here. Ready? Bluesier, say my name, April. Member for 22 months. Thank you. D. Guleg, finally the show we wanted. I think I got him, but thank you. Uh, Raz of Chaz, the $2 donation for April's worn out b-hole. Thank you very much. It never gets enough attention. <laughs> the Optic Nerve for $5, the April show. Let's fucking go. Thank you. Sandy with uh, membership for 22 months. Doing great and looking lovely, April. Thank you. I'm a little self-conscious in this shirt. K-Max McDonald's. Don't worry, you won't wear it long. Ah, I get it. We're at work. Yeah, you're right. Sexual Can harassment. you just... You know, it's funny. I went to that class, too. April made me watch a video because I've been very R-wordy towards her on the show. Ugh. And it clearly didn't take. What do you do? Thank God none of it takes. No, I'm just kidding. Oh, that was a mean joke. <laughs> I take it back. I kid, I kid. I'm kidding. You're snipped. You can't. Technically, you'd have a doctor to sue if anything took because he told you. Oh, that'd it be wouldn't. great! I'd get a kid with you and a shitload of money. I guess it checks out. No, you can't. You actually can't sue them for that. Uh, they make you what? sign a thing. That's why they tell you it's ninety nine point nine. Are you effective. shitting me? Yeah, because they can always say, "Well, we told you it was ninety nine point nine percent effective." No offense, doctors, but if you're snipping somebody's vast deferens and cauterizing that shit so that no sperms jump the gap, you might get like an evil can evil sperm. No, we're not though. That's not okay with me. That wouldn't be okay with me. Like the way Princess Leia came back into the ship after it was blown up with her force bubble. You know? Yes. I don't Just know. like that. Just like that. Right. Uh, K-Max McDonald with $5. Thank you. April, always enjoy you on Simpcast. Uh, hope you can be on before she gives birth to her baby. That'd be cool. I love Chrissy. She is the best, and she's going to be a great mom. She still looks good. Uh, looks like she's pregnant with about twins at least. Yes. She's remarkably tiny, and then there's just this belly. She's adorable, though. Okay, I got Ozone. I got Vitaly. Why don't all of these show up in chat? They do. Do they really? Uh, okay. Got that one. <laughs> Finkelstein <laughs> shit kid. I love this guy. Nine ninety nine from Finkelstein shit kid. Uh, this one's not for Melton. And then he says, if Aaron's going to stay, I'd like my nine ninety nine back. <laughs> Suck my dick. Uh, Raz of Chaz, two bucks, says, weird with you two swapped. I'm zoomed in on Aaron's bobs. I think he means Oh, bobs. Boobs. I don't know. Not my bobs. No, I thought we were talking about you uh, waxing your head, not having a bob. All right. Can I get back in my seat now? I'm right. remarkably uncomfortable. I'm not. I don't like I don't know why we seat. all need to change just for you, Aaron. Because it's my show. I have a really good story to tell about you do. tonight. I so will let you tell that story. I need to tell the story or I'm not letting you switch. All right, you, if we switch now, you tell the story now. Okay, and I right. have to pee remarkably bad. Of course. So that's going to happen at some point. All right, come on. Let's, enough of this horse shit. I've entertained Hold this on, enough. don't rush greatness. I've enjoyed this very much, people. I would do this over and over again. I didn't even have to fill time with my story. No. I don't have a good sexy face either. When I start grabbing female flesh, I just kind of make aggressive medieval war faces. Uh, you should work um, on it. No, no, I'd rather not. I, it's my own unique brand of love. But it lets you hey. know. It lets you know you're loved, but you're also in danger. Your cord is too long. And I like. I get that all the time. God damn. Hobo chili recipe with five bucks says your husband is a faggot for drinking Jaeger. I hope that spicy German motor oil poisons his gut. That should pay. Also, I think you're doing a fantastic job. Keep it up, bimbo. Thank you, hobo. That's the nicest thing he's ever said to it me. It is one of the nicest things he's um, ever said. That wasn't my husband that called in. Yeah, that, that was Oz. That was Oz Klein. By the way, 215 is now, oh, it's less than that now. You've all been drinking my booze. Uh, Brown Nuts with not, uh, 10 bucks says, take my mom's medicine money. Oh, no. And uh, Finkelstein shit kid making it 210 tonight says, Aaron, you don't make enough for that to ever happen. Uh-oh. Which one? Don't make enough for what to ever happen. 
Thank you, guys. Finkelstein shit kid, which one did I... I don't mind you saying that I'm broke. That's fine. I just need to know how broke I am exactly. What did you guys I, do down here? I don't know what that... The kids were... Kids were tearing the place apart. Good Lord. There was nothing I could do. Nothing I could do. All right, guys. Uh, April has a story. Yes. We are at 210. You guys, thank you very much. Uh, we like to be under 200 by the top of the hour. We're not even at the bottom of the damn thing. Uh, so go ahead, uh, throw in Streamlabs, PayPal, all that shit. Thank you. Uh, oh, hey. Here we go. Oh, it's, you know. Do you like how I've worked on the fly, by the way, which you never do with your phone on the show? Oz, you made it work. Oz called me, and instead of panicking and not taking the call, I figured it out. You did. I'm proud of I you. I didn't need that shit connected. I'm proud of you. Uh MSO says, ruined the show. We all were enjoying April in charge. She still is. So April got into a, a situation. I'm going to let her tell it, and I'm going to get situated and get all my stuff together. You guys keep knocking that shit out. You're doing great. And uh, April will tell her story. Go ahead. Oh, my God. <laughs> People are mean to you. Okay. So tonight, um, I was leaving my family uh, for about five, five-ish, to get back here to do this lovely evening show. And this, I, I know he's got to be listening right now. This, I'm going to call him a crazy-looking man. I was in the left lane uh, on this highway. It's a two-lane highway. No, wait. So two-lane going one direction. So he Four-lane highway. So yeah, four, four That's lane. all right. Go ahead. You're doing four great. Four-lane highway. This crazy-looking man, this uh, Ford. I'm sure he likes hearing himself described that way. By the way, thank you for complimenting my looks earlier. That was very nice, actually. That was very sweet. I don't sweet. remember doing that. You did. You were very nice to me. It's show amnesia. I don't it remember It made me anything. feel good. I'm just letting you know it boosted my self-esteem. I don't self think it esteem. happened. I felt loved. Continue on. I like how you interrupt my story of survival You were asking for you were, your uh, appearances. You were asking me if the two-lane road thing was correct, and I was... I didn't ask. Go ahead. <laughs> All right, I'm leaving. Bye-bye. Okay. Okay, so. <clears throat> okay, so he's listening. His girlfriend's in here. He's listening. Good. So this guy, I'm in the left lane. My cruise is set, you know, going fast enough. Not speeding, per se, but fast enough. Now, as many of you know, this goddamn deer a little while back had, I didn't hit the deer. The deer hit me. I'm going like 35 on a country curve, and this retard runs right into my front uh, passenger side bumper. So this little piece is like, cracked off but it's still attached figure it out and um so i have this thing like firmly zip tied to my truck until i can get it to the shop and it's fine it's not really that big it's like this and this but it was secure it's been secure since the day it happened uh apparently today it was not on my way home this man who turns out to be a listener uh speeds up to catch up to me Tries to do motion to me to pull over. And I'm like, oh, hell no. This looked like a, sure, you know, run in the middle dude with a beard and all this stuff. Looks like a hardworking guy, but I don't know him. So I'm like, I ain't pulling over for somebody I didn't do anything to, right? I didn't hit him. I didn't have anything from my truck fly out and hit him. So I keep going. And I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> I keep going. And he had slowed down because he was preparing to pull over to the shoulder with me. I'm like, No. So I kept going. He speeds the fuck up to motion to me one more time. Like, no, pull over. So I'm like, okay, God, I don't want to anger this man. I don't know what's going on. I pull over. And I'm like, well, what's going on, buddy? And he's like, did you know that you have like part of your bumper hanging off your truck and it's rubbing on your tire and smoking? And I'm like, holy fucking shit. And he starts to tell me about how, yeah, I was driving behind you clearly and your tire smoking. I could smell it. Your shit's going to blow if you let that continue. Ooh, lucky tire. Lucky tire. I'm like, oh, my God. So I looked at it, and he was right. There was a little bit of wear on my tire, but hardly. You can just see a mark where it yeah, was. It's yeah. just a plastic bumper, right? This man proceeds to ask me. He's like, are you April by any chance? I'm like, uh, yep. He's like, April M. Holt? Uh, yep. Well, he's like, oh, cool. Uh, yeah, well, he told me his actual name, and yeah. then I had to ask later. But it was, I effed up my Buick. Oh, okay. He's been an, uh, an OG listener for fuck ever, I'm assuming. I, I remember his name from way back. Very nice guy. Uh, took time out of his day uh, in his brand new truck, congratulations, with not all of his tools in it, to scrounge around his truck to find a tool uh, and go through several of them trying to get this piece off so it can stop rubbing on my tire and I can make it home safe. Very nice man. Ended up cutting it off for me. I have the piece in my truck. I hate it. 
but he did a very good job. Um, I think he deserves all the praise. Now maybe you'll finally man. pick that collision place that you need to go to. I know. Uh, April filed her claim with insurance. And like, you need to pick a place you want to go to so we know to work with them. And she hasn't done it. Anyways. This, I, so and I'm I, not allowed to. They emailed me about it, and I said, well, it's a blah, blah, blah. And they said, are you the claimant? And I said, no. And they're like, then you need to fuck off. They wouldn't let me do it. Really? Yeah. Although you're on the policy? You have to do it. It's your truck. Your, it's your truck, your name. I don't get to do it. Fine. So well, maybe something to think about. Anyways, it, ironically, it looks better with it cut off. Well, then you know what you do? You file the claim, you get the estimate, you pocket the cash. <laughs> no. <laughs> are you kidding me? You got to fix that shit. Uh, no, that's what this, I did with my dent. This man, though, I want to sincerely thank him one more time. He won't let me. He's like, oh, you don't owe me anything. But I'm like, please message me so I can send you something nice. I don't She kept have trying to jack him off. Yeah, but I heard he had a girlfriend. So yeah, I didn't it was just think weird. That was wise. Yeah. Um, I know Aaron wouldn't carry saved my life, so. I'm kidding. I have something to say about Jokes. That. Um, it would upset me. I think his, his girlfriend's in the chat. She should consider staying with that man. Uh, let's go to Scooby Jooby Jew. 20 bucks from him. He says, I wore my Steel Toe Born Again Again shirt yesterday. People kept asking if it was some kind of Easter shirt. I had to keep explaining that, no, I'm Jewish and just enjoy an anti-Semitic podcast. I mean, look, sometimes hey. you argue with people. Thank you. Sometimes you don't argue with people. Uh, thank you very much, buddy. We are under 200 for the night. 195 is our number. Thank you very much. Go in there, click one of those links, and... Uh, Go ahead and contribute something to the program. We appreciate it. Let's catch up with the chat here. You guys have been very mean to me. Oh, they're getting mean to me now, uh, too. Thus far. You know, you know you, what it is? You have a, a story where uh, the Good Samaritan literally went out of his way to pull me over so I didn't get in trouble uh, and make it home safe. And the, and the whole chat's like, oh, my God, she's fantasizing about this man. Oh, my God. Uh, Roots Calhoun says, April looks good tonight. Aaron, you look like shit. Good to know Root's positions have not changed. We're supposed Thanks. to do a track together, and I, I just don't have time to... My hip-hop career doesn't have time to rejuvenate itself. I don't know. You were all talk a while back. I know, and then I never got around to it. Like she it. Do better. Michael B. says, this is not a bit. I have 12 tactical nukes. I can fix Minnesota. You know, that's passion. Uh, uh, just get all the stupid deer. You know what, man? You just... I, I like what you're doing. I like where your head's at. Just, you know... Keep them on their toes. Keep, keep them on their toes. Uh, April's missing over. He says, oh, good. April isn't alone anymore, unlike me. Well, technically, if you're the missing one, you're rotting somewhere in a dumpster. Oh, no, you're long gone. Oh, yeah. Long gone Sorry. at this point. Uh, two bucks from I Say Gutierrez says, Should, shouldn't Aaron be coaching high school wrestling? Fuck you. Maybe. Uh, uh, Scarface says, sometimes there's a Jew sitting at your dining room table justifying rioting and looting. <laughs> SH says, don't do that. My parents took the money from an accident in my mom's Mustang to fly to visit family. Car sat in the backyard and rotted. No, yeah. I'm not. No, I don't. Th she should get her car fixed. Well, I yeah, was kidding. Uh, even for trade-in value, you can't do that shit with a missing pump. <laughs> yeah, don't, don't do that. Uh, P. Diff says, you guys are tire experts. Like, don't say that name. Like, why do you even pay attention to what? someone like that? Uh, don't, get out of that universe. There's something wrong with you if you like that shit. It's such terrible entertainment. Uh, Loaded Wrench says, that's how pornos start. Looks like you got a bad tire. Want to head back to my place? It actually is inspirational. I might write a story. Oh, I would like to that. say, no, I'm not fantasizing about him. And he was remarkably polite and respectful. Amanda Hugginkiss says, I was watching police body cams on YouTube. What is wrong with La Crosse, Wisconsin? Oh, isn't that where our boy's from? Uh, oh, um, oh, God, what is his name? I can't remember his name, but yeah, he, oh, man, he is a per perennial, it's, uh, torrential fuck-up. And he's from Wisconsin. Yeah, that guy's been arrested Adam in Florida something. and Wisconsin. I think it's Adam something or Kyle something. Oh, my God. One of the two. Uh, real quick, SH says, you never know. Some people keep cars until they die. So that wouldn't bother them about the bumper. If it's like a little dent or something and it's going to be like 1500 bucks to replace, I don't mind people keeping it. But if it's like a chunk of your car's missing, you've got to yeah. take the insurance and get that done. This is actually like trashed, the bumper. Yeah. I, I need a new one. Uh, Dr. Chow, love him, says, I've dedicated two years of my medical doctorate to studying. No, don't do that. Oh. By the way, the guy's name is Noah. Oh, yeah. Noah Betts. That is the Noah one. Noah Betts. That's it. Yep. yep. Jesus. Carlos Cameo says, I can't believe I remembered that, right? Just some of the names that you autism. store in the back of your head. It's autism. What was the actor poll I had yesterday? 
that people were like, uh, oh, Jesus Christ. Sam Shepard, the guy who played the general in Black Hawk Down. People oh were like, my God, Jesus dude. Christ, what's wrong with you? Ugh. It's just gross. Uh, oh, I got a private message from Crunchy Cynicism. Should I read it? Well, you two fuck sometimes, so yeah, you probably we do should. Sometimes. You might want to, you know, schedule that around me. You know, at least pencil me in once or twice pencil a week. Pencil you in once, once or twice a week? Is yeah. that what you're saying? Yeah. How about a couple times a week for you? Once at a week. At least seven for her. Once, uh, I, I'll give her, I got to give my wife more. At least once a day. My wife gets the most, and then she can have the next most. And then, uh, I don't know, I'll keep my dance card open for one. You know, just in case. You know, when, you, when you're swinging all the time, you got to keep your options open. I don't think that's considered swinging. Johnny and I were talking about it today. Just I always, uh, I always just marvel at how cool everyone who hates me thinks I am. And they're because I went to the bathroom today, and they're like, "Oh, Aaron went. He just went and did coke." And I'm like, "You guys think I'm a lot fucking cooler than I am? Like I I'm fucking, I'm doing coke. I'm I know just, about the swinging stuff. You guys make it sound so interesting and fun. Right. I might just start doing it. Eight thirty in the morning. I'm just like. <laughs> Like, oh, Aaron's fucking Keanu and Lady Rackets. I'm like, God damn, I'm swimming in pub. Fucking Where am I? April. I'm fucking April. Where am I? You fucking everybody too. What? Yes. So you get all the drugs and the pussy? And you're getting all the dicks, apparently. I think your uh, powder is actually fun dip, which would be awesome. Fuck. That's why I'm fun so jacked up so all the good. time. It's sugar. I actually wish you'd buy me fun dip sometimes. All you got to do is ask. Uh, lossless. I love lossless. He says, Aaron, you're lucky. April almost took $500 to knock you out when you got back. I actually saw that in the chat. I was going to endorse that. I would have done it. 500 bucks. That would have pretty much been all the evening shows for this week. I, uh, I'd have taken a, a right hand for that one. I think I could do it if you let me. I no. just, I've never hit somebody like that. I don't think you could knock like, me out. on purpose without mitts. Uh, <laughs> loaded wrench. The hairline is from dragging the coke table. That's exactly what Jesus. it is. It's, by the way, it's a mirror. It's not a table. It's a mirror. Uh, Carlos says he's preparing for that celebratory 10th anniversary show line of blow. It's not going to be a line. It's just going to be like a Scarface pop. Oh, yeah, like on your uh, table. Wait, is it his desk? He's just got this fucking mound. Yeah, I'm just going to go in. right from the mound. Dude, that doesn't look like a good idea. I disavow. <laughs> I uh, discourage you from doing this. Bunch of fucking pussies running this show with me. Jesus Christ. Uh, 195 is the number. Oh, no, not 210. I've got, I'm lying to you guys. There you go. Boom. P. Diff says, oh, God, this level of autism is insane. You guys got to work on yourselves. 500 for the week. That's not the whole week. If it's 200 each day, the math doesn't. Dude, fucking chill. It was it was an estimated number. It was, it was a round of, buddy, you got to stop being an accountant when you watch this show. Sometimes I say shit shorthand. Oh, yeah? I, I realize how much of my job is taking it easy and calming you motherfuckers down. You guys got to stop being so excitable. All right. We have a bunch of shit Going down. Oh, by the way, Steve C says uh, April fucks for sure. Aaron is not a sex guy. Aaron don't fuck. I fuck. My man. Apparently he fucks the whole neighborhood. I've been fucking since the day I turned 17. And I have Ew. not looked back. Just till kingdom come. See you later, Steve C. Like, you bore like me. Tom? You bore me, buddy. Uh, Sean says 500 seems like a decent price for April to knock you out. Honestly, it's a steal. It's not. A, yeah, it's not a bad deal. Really? I don't think. No, it's not a bad. You deal. would let me knock you out for $500. Yeah, probably. All right. Uh, Root says Aaron Dick Game Trash Imhold. I, I read that with a smile, my man. I read it's that with though. a smile. It's I, a good dick game. Wherever you guys thought that came from. Well, however you twisted my shit like a goddamn tornado. It's false. I always, I was, none of this shit bothers me anymore. They've made me remarkably callous to it. But I just, it, whatever you guys need to say to sleep at night. They really do have to give my dick game a little more you respect. Really, especially you, Roots. No, it's whatever they have to say to sleep at night. They have to pretend your dick's, It's a them, you know, th yeah, it's a them thing. Not, not right. Uh, Dr. Chow says, who are the Vikings drafting? Dude, the more the days go on, the more I'm hoping J.J. McCarthy. I'm really uh, hoping J.J. McCarthy. What are the odds of that? Pretty good. That seems oh, like who man. we're going with. I neglected the rumble chat. I'm sorry. You did, but it's, it's okay. We got him. Aww. 
We got him. All right, we got lots of stuff to talk about. Uh, I wanted to do this Shakira thing. I know we've got uh, April's boy, MGK. We got to cover him today. Uh, okay. Steve-O doesn't like Bill Maher. Tori, uh, Tori Spelling divorced her husband on their podcast, which is something we should think about when that day ever comes. Okay, fair enough. If you and I are ever at the point where we need to split, yeah. why would we fucking do that off camera? Yeah, just do it on the show. I think any big thing like that you should do on camera. Yeah. That's a good idea. Like, don't even tell each other. Monetize your divorces, guy. Yeah, just monetize your divorce. For sure. That's terrible. Oh, uh, yeah, so we got that. We've got uh, <laughs> we got guys in New Zealand who are actually on the... They're on the lam for painting over the... You know the gay trans pride flag crosswalks? Yes. Some guys in New Zealand have been painting over them with white paint, and now they're literally on the run from the authorities. Like, the police want them that bad that these guys are on the lam for painting over crosswalks. It's fantastic. Can I, um, can I ask you something kind of uncomfortable? What? And yes. it's embarrassing. Okay. What does on the lam mean? On the run, running from the law. But why is it lamb? I know the term. I don't know what it means. I don't know what it means. Fine. Uh, Freaky Deaky says, I seen a mock draft where we trade for Kyler Murray, give Cardinals another first mm. round pick. Dude, if we traded for Kyler Murray, wait, so we so we're trading for Kyler Murray and we're keeping the eleventh pick, or we're trading up to if we could get Kyler Murray and Marvin Harrison Jr. and then have <laughs> Justin Jefferson, Marvin Harrison Jr., Jordan Addison, and TJ Hawkinson, that's would be that would be great. Oh my god. Uh, because lambs are Jews. I, I don't think that's the one. Yeah, why do they say on the lamb? I thought lamb was L-A-M and it was short for something. I, I figured it was short for something. Uh, what does on the lamb? Oh my God, I'm going to sneeze like a fucking bitch, right? On the lamb means running away. L-A-M. I knew it was L-A-M. Or being a fugitive from the law. Bureaucrats would say in escape status. The origin of the expression is in heated dispute among slaying etymologists. Okay, so nobody knows who... Created the phrase on the lamb. And it's just L-A-M. It's not. Uh, it's from the old English word lamb, which meant a beating. So you're on the beating. That doesn't make any I, fucking sense. I'm going to spit this out. Oh, God. Okay, just go do it. Don't tell me you're going to go do it. Don't. Ugh. Jesus Christ. Oh, man. Well, at any rate, guys, 195 away from today. Let's go into our first story. Uh, Shakira is catching heat from feminists because she dared to say that the Barbie movie was kind of shit. Uh, Shakira, the thing about Shakira is she's Colombian. And Colombian women, Central American women in general, are kind of, if not based, they're very traditionalist. So you're not going to have like a Shakira watch the Barbie movie and go, oh my God, I thought it was a great example of women being powerful and taking charge and everything else. If you liked Shakira before, which we all do, you're going to love her more after this. So she took her sons to watch the Barbie movie, which I don't know, or, or her sons watched the Barbie movie. And uh, she said, my sons absolutely hated it. They felt it was emasculating. And I agree. I'm raising two boys. I want them to feel powerful, too, while respecting women. Uh, I like in pop culture, I like pop culture when it attempts to empower women without robbing men of their possibility to be men to also protect and provide. I believe in giving, giving women all the tools and the trust that we can do it all without losing our essence, without losing our femininity. I think that men have a purpose in society and women have another purpose as well. We complement each other, and that compliment should not be lost. Now, I don't want to live in a world where that's controversial. I don't want to live in a world where there's a debate around that. But the problem is, with social media and all of you retards thinking the internet is real, you guys see an argument where like 10% of the population thinks a certain way. And then you guys all convince yourself that in the real world, it's 50-50. It's one of the greatest cancers of all time is nerds and dorks who think the internet is real and don't go outside. It's dangerous because they can sometimes shape narratives and they're so wrong. And then you wonder why our society just keeps falling apart. It's because people who have no inkling of how real people think 
actually think the world they live in is the real world. It's one of the most sad, pathetic things. When they say good times create weak men, the weak men they're talking about are people who are on Reddit and Discord and shit like that. And they look at the thing like, like the Shakira deal and they watch like feminists arguing with Shakira on, hey, men and women should complement each other instead of trying to like dominate each other. And feminists will go, oh, Shakira's a traitor. Shakira's not a real woman, blah, blah, blah. And then people on Reddit will go, yeah, there's a war. We got to get these feminazi bitches. And meanwhile, if you go to all your neighbors and you talk to anyone at social events and you go, hey, men and women should complement each other in relationships and make each other complete, they would go, yeah, you fucking retard, of course. Why do you even need to say that out loud? You'll get looked at as weird in the real world if you say that because people will be like, nobody here was debating that, you shithead. So it's kind of weird where like internet people who want to start these cultural divides and these cultural battles, they only hang around each other. So they think they're at like a cool kid table. But what they don't realize is when you zoom out and look at everyone else's perspective, they look at them and go, what a sad group of goofy ass sociopathic little fuckers they are. Like almost like they're in an ant colony. So like the Shakira thing, like on the internet today, this was a big thing. Oh my God, the feminists are coming after Shakira. Shakira is worth tens of millions of dollars. Shakira probably doesn't even know any of these people are writing mean things about her. She probably doesn't give a shit because it doesn't matter. And then also people who are reading this shit on the internet probably go, oh yeah, oh, this is a fight. Like this is a, this is a Donnybrook. This is a, she doesn't give a shit. Woo. I promise you she doesn't give a shit. I only uh, sneeze seven times. Jesus. So these are some of the replies Shakira got. And again, you guys, nobody gives a fuck. Shakira doesn't care. None of her people care. This isn't a, a cultural touchstone. Most people in the world think that men and women complement each other, and that's the best way to go. Absolutely. Like the feminist idea of, no, women are men, and we don't need a man, and blah, blah. That's like 10 to 20% of the population. You just think it's 50-50 because you spend your days fighting with them on the internet. Stop it. Isn't that the truth? Right. Don't do that. Mm -hmm. Be better people. Go to work. Go talk to people. I, I know... A, look, I know most of them are boring and uninteresting, and there's really like three different kinds of people... And then we're all just kind of a copy of that. I yep. get it. Yep. I understand. But it'll give you some perspective so you don't live a miserable life. Uh, here's some replies to the tweet quoting Shakira. I'm on her side, by the way. I'm sure y'all No, she's 100% right. Yes. Now, was the Barbie movie emasculating? Probably, but Barbie's emasculating. Ken literally has no dick and balls. He's flat in front. You ever heard the term flat in front like Ken? Uh-oh. Oh, Aaron. Just little driblets. It's okay. Driblets. Little driblets. You know, my favorite sandwich at McDonald's is the McDriblet. McDriblet? It's pretty good. Hey, uh, I went to the P.O. box today okay. to get the sippy cup. Yes. I forgot our P.O. box number. I walked in and like a retard, I walked out. Is it like 7893? Seven. No, it's 7893. Is it really? Did I have it right? Yes. <laughs> Why didn't you try it? Good call, right? You didn't try it? Because uh, I didn't think of the number till after I left. I kind of just started looking at the walls of boxes, and I got intimidated. I forgot what the number was. You would be looking at walls of boxes, you weirdo. Uh, picking my favorite one and saying, you, come here. <laughs> you really didn't just stick your key you, in there? You, come here. All right, so anyway, the point is what I'm trying. Come here. <laughs> Not ring? There's no ring on this yeah, yet. You went ring finger. Uh, look, it's so goddamn dry. I can't put rings on these knuckles. Speak look. No, I meant ring. You included the ring finger. No, pointer, not ring. Really? You you go this way. Yeah. Wow, we're really revealing a lot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm good. I tap out. I go, I am. Uh, oh, no. no. I mean, uh, to each. I'm not looking at the camera right to now. To each their own. I suppose. My point is, hey, by the way, did you find my ring today when I asked you to look for it? Ah, damn it. Oh, no. I'm fucking sorry. It's okay. I'll, Man, I'll tell my family to look for it later. I felt bald all day. Yeah, that but, happens uh, to me sometimes. Yeah. But I have, I got them on today. Everything going to be ID. You like mine? They look good, Looks right? Look nice. at my dry ass knuckles. You do have dry ass skin. Damn. I'm embarrassed to be seen with you. I know, me with too. With all that dry skin. It's uh, like Grand Canyon in that one. 
Oof. I put lotion on it constantly. So the Shakira tweet, uh, the feminist uh, went out on Twitter, said, uh, I'm disappointed in this take, Shakira. Like, why would you write that? Who gives a fuck what Kahori thinks? I'm disappointed in this take, Shakira. Remember the days where we used to just keep shit like that in our head because we yeah. had the self-awareness to realize nobody fucking cares? Oh, no, I'm old enough that I still do. Right. I don't remember the last time I tweeted at anybody. Just say you don't understand it and go. Oh, fuck. It's a fucking Barbie movie. I never saw it. Did she not watch the ending of the movie where the Kens finally got their respect and their purpose was show casted? Oh, who, guys, 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 guys. Fucking who cares? She gave her take on a movie. Okay, but also this is a movie geared towards ladies, right? It's a Barbie, and historically, that toy has been for ladies, for girls. I'm sorry, this woman took her sons to a girls' movie. Yeah, it's so, and also you fucking asked her about it. Like, like Shakira wasn't going to go uh, out there and just give her take on the movie. You asked her about the Barbie movie. She gave you her opinion. Move on. It's not a big deal. Like the thing she said wasn't even like. I guess controversial. It wasn't controversial at all. You can't even, like, try to put it in that category. Yeah. It's You'd have to really try. Admiral Alzheimer says, as much as these two hate Mexicans, you'd think Modelo would not be their first choice. Oh, as someone who absolutely 100% despises Mexicans, believe you me. Uh, I, do, I don't like... I'm drinking this because I have to. Oh, false. Well, yeah, this was my beer, and uh, as somebody who loves a nice roof and her yard to look phenomenal, I love Mexicans. See, that would be, that would be considered so, racist. Cheers. Uh, How about cheers in Spanish? Uh, uh, Los Federales says, plot twist, Aaron never went to the P.O. box as he never made it past the Wendy's. All right, look, funny joke, but I did quit and give up on the P.O. box and go next door to Herbert's and Gerbert's and get a sandwich. <laughs> did you really? Mm-hmm. Which one did you get? This is important. The Spartan. That's a good one. As I always do. They changed it, though. It's fucking bullshit. Remember when it just used to be like they had the, the mustard in there, the nice mustard? The with grainy the grainy one? Now they've got like cucumbers and sun-dried tomatoes and regular tomatoes. They toma always had that. No. Yes, they did. The Spartan was not about that shit, homeboy. I think you're just getting old and forgetting. Maybe. Maybe I liked the I, I used to get that one because I liked the uh, sun-dried tomatoes. But they didn't have cucumbers. Yeah, they did. Fuck. I'm getting old and I forgetting I used to add shit. mayo to it. They have mayo... Yeah, it has mayo on it already. Is it really? I add mayo to everything. <sighs> it looks like cum, of course, so. Damn, 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 damn. Well, anyway, I kept trying to pick the cucumbers out. Because How I didn't like them. How hard do you have them. to try? They're in huge coins. So sometimes you bite into them before you see them. It's tragic. You are so particular. Look, man, I, I like what I like. Uh, Scarface says, I don't think Aaron has been around to know the Dayton Hypernova are. I don't know the Dayton Hypernova Dude, his dad's yell is legendary. I don't like whatever you just the said. Oh, my God. I wish I could find that video. I used to have it as a... Uh, I used to have it as a drop back in the radio days. Dayton Hypernova um, dad fight. Your recommended videos are troubling. Why? I don't know. I just don't like them. Dayton Hypernova only cares about... No, it's it's not that. Is this the is this the one? Has psychological issues. <laughs> I fucking love. <laughs> All right, let's hear it again. All right, I don't like this guy. I hate his voice. I want. It's an ROTC clip. Ah shit! If somebody finds it, send it to me. Whatever. Oh, I know. I know Dayton Hypernova. Are you kidding me? I have no idea who that is. It's okay. You don't have to. It's not, it's not going to be on the test. I promise you. Uh, a lot of people, by the way, giving, uh, giving reviews on the uh, goatee, they don't like it. Okay. I don't like it. I haven't like seen it. any comments on it. It's, uh, oh, I just what's saw, wrong with I, it? I saw a couple. It was, uh, well. It is dark, but like, what's wrong with that? Uh, oh, God damn it. I just had one. I haven't seen any. And I fucking lost it. Oh, well. 
Uh, it's okay, April. You're better off not going down that rabbit hole. Yeah, I, I think the... Um, dude, if you're just going to write heel turn 90 times in the chat, you're just going to go. Like, you got to stop oh, with yeah. the autism. Oh, no, there's another guy, the Alzheimer's guy. Uh, he must have forgot he wrote the chat one time. Oh. He's uh, remarking on your multiple chins. Oh, is he? Time and time again. You would think if you grew this long enough, you could hide them. Maybe. Maybe that's the deal. I'll be Josh and says, what goatee? Oh, by the way, I did get a comment from... Uh, uh, Cambodian River Pig. I love that guy. He does reviews of shitty channels. Okay. And he wrote, he left a comment on uh, our show this morning. He said, "Holy shit!" He goes, "You everyone's kind of noticing that you're right about Melton. If he doesn't talk about you, he's got fucking nothing." He goes, "He was watching some fat guy today and just calling him fat." He goes, "It was the fucking worst thing I've ever seen." And I'm like, "Yes, I rescued the guy. I gave him everything. I'm his daddy. He knows this, and I just want to thank you." So, and I say you're welcome. And if Cambodian River Pig recognizes it, that to me is normal, intelligent people. So it's just more of the pot co uh, calling the kettle black. Oh, right. How dare he? How dare Patrick call anybody fat? Well, that's me? obviously him coping and tr trying to, Look, you know, it kind of it's it furthers the the whole lore that he's trying to run away from what he is. He's trying to put on a character. It's like a little boy pretending to be a superhero because his uncle molests him. That's what Patrick's doing about his fat, hunchback, obese, diabetic life. Is he's trying to cope with it by going, I'm a truth-telling, I pick things apart. And it's like, no, you're just kind of a lying retard. It, lying to yourself in your own basement. Well, yeah. I, I mean, you know, as a guy who lies to himself in his own basement, I think I can analyze no. these things pretty well. And he's just a little boy trying to not be the fat, bullied, abandoned kid that he is. And it's very clear. Very clear. Well, man, it's like if I were to call somebody fat, that just looks like I'm either being mean or trying to be funny. Yeah. No, he's definitely, and, uh, he, he's definitely, out. yeah, he's definitely got that attitude about his weight and his yeah. childhood that kids who were molested have, where he's just trying to be anything but that kid because he's running away from himself. And okay. therapy will fix that. That's the thing. All right. I want to get to this uh, Mayor Brandon Scott. Uh, Johnny and I, uh, April, I think you were busy today. I don't think you mm -hmm. caught today's show, but a, uh, Johnny and I bit. were talking about that mayor in Illinois. Uh, I always forget her name, and it, I'm, if I guess her name, I'm just going to sound racist, like LaTonda Hawkins or whatever the fuck her name is, and uh, LaFonda Taylor. I don't remember. LaFonda. But um, I, I, I'm getting a bunch of videos popping up about her now because of how corrupt she is and all the crazy shit she's been up to. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I found this guy, the mayor of Baltimore, Brandon Scott. Uh, you know, Baltimore had that, that bridge collapse. Well, I mean, bridge collapse, a fucking ship crashed into it. And the Francis Scott Key Bridge came down. So the mayor's been on TV a lot. Okay. And we're finding out what a fucking mess the mayor of Baltimore is. Like, because we know Baltimore. That's Balt understandable in a way, isn't it? Right. We know Baltimore's in the shitter, it's right? It's not doing well. Yeah. No. So this guy comes on TV to talk about the bridge collapse, and he just starts going off about DEI and white people and race and all this other shit. And you're just like, bro, if you want to know why your city is in such dog shit shape, this is all you need to do. Yeah. You just no you just, just need to look at this guy. Just watch him. Throw him on TV a few times. Let's go ahead and watch uh, Brandon <gasps> Scott, the mayor of Baltimore. Ooh, this is bad already. And see what he uh, see what he thinks about the uh, bridge collapse. Allow you, uh, Mayor Scott. Of course, he's on Joy Reid's show. He doesn't even have to talk before I know he's not qualified. Right. That could have sounded bad, I guess. Oh, because you're saying he's black. No. Oh, April. Why would thing. I ever say that? I was just saying because he looks like a child. He's wearing a grape colored hoodie. And he's mayor. He's a grape hoodie. He looks like he's just came off the high school basketball court. He's literally wearing a Baltimore hoodie. You couldn't just throw it on a suit jacket, a sport coat, anything. You couldn't have dressed like a white to be on television. How a dare A button you. up with a collar. <laughs> anything. So let's go ahead and hear him out on uh, Joy Reid's show and see what he has to say. If you choose to do so, to respond to the tomfoolery uh, and attacks on you. Whoa. Whoa. Okay, look, guys, Whoa. I am sorry. I did not put a trigger warning on tonight's episode. I did not tell you that there was going to be coarse language, and I really want to apologize. I know that Joy Reid can be really flippant with her language, and maybe this is something I should have thought about. I did not know the word tomfoolery was going to be broadcast on this channel today. Insane. Do you know who the chief of tomfoolery is? <laughs> 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 I forgot about it. <laughs> Stop. Don't. Come on. 
stop. Don't call yourself that. I every time you tell me that I cringe. Don't do that. <laughs> don't tell him, but I kind of do too. Yeah, don't. I don't get it. I don't know why that's there. Maybe I missed something. It's, you know what it is? Uh, un- ironically, giving who I am and who he is. It's a hacky morning radio. I think that's why he's doing it, but I'm I can't confirm. Right. Like, what if that's like? Like, you don't want to hurt his feelings and be like, "Dude, it's fucking cringe." Uh (laughs) That's real. It's funny, right? I'm the chief of Tom Flory. I no. (laughs) What? What? Was I getting close? Was I getting warm? Not even close, but just you're trying is hilarious. (laughs) My face is. Uh, This is this is a him hand motion. No, you gotta. Look, there should be liquid in this, but it basically it's it's this. Yeah, you got to get your hand out. Sometimes he does a waiter motion with his hand. I feel mean now. I it feel mean. Damn it. Move on. I forgot about the chief of Tom. If I would have gone the rest of my life. How do you forget? Forgetting that, I, I would have been okay. I don't know how you forget okay. that. It's so uh, absurd. Oh, no. Now, I'm going to have to ask sometime where that came from because. Hopefully it came from a retarded kid. And he's like, and the retarded kid died in a plane crash. And I hope he's not listening. And so he has to keep calling himself that to honor that retarded kid's memory. That would Then I would be fine with it. I hope he's not listening. So when I do ask if it's like serious or not, like it doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what to do with this now. Oh, boy. I forget that too, but as a. Not okay. Yeah, but if you have real friends, your real friends tell you that that sucks ass. You gotta have friends who will tell that you. That man those has things. a black friend who let that shit slide. Yeah, that's not okay. Then, then you ain't. In the words of Joe Biden, you ain't black. I'm uncomfortable. All right. Speaking of people who aren't black, let's watch the mayor of Baltimore with his hoodie. For having the nerve to be black and also a mayor. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I've been saying. <laughs> She's the worst. She really is just How, an un, she is a joyless person. You know, I don't like questioning our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, but I find it absurd that he allowed that woman to be called Joy. Right. How did he allow that to happen? It, it makes you question his existence. Right. Does the Lord exist? Joy that Reed. Called Joy. Joy Reed makes me question whether or not Jesus is real the day after Easter. Dude, she makes me question if Joy exists. <laughs> Let's watch this again. I, 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 I paused this a bunch, but... Uh, Allow you, uh, Mayor Scott, if you choose to do so, to respond to the tomfoolery uh, and attacks on you for having the nerve to be black and also a mayor. I love how she thinks that's what the criticisms of Baltimore are. No. Oh, the mayor is black and a mayor. Oh, I don't know, maybe it could be that or the high crime rate or the incompetent leadership or the fact that a ship just crashed into one of your biggest bridges and knocked it down, which is going to now be an economic nightmare for that area and the country. I mean, it could be any one of those things. Or you know what, Joy? You're right. You fucking four-year-old who didn't get her toy. It, it, it's probably just because he's black and a mayor. You could take all the uh, trank addicts from the Kensington area and just pile That's them Philly. up. Oh, is that Philly? Yep, that's yeah. Philly. Guy, that's not his responsibility. Baltimore, Shit, that's the one where they draw in chalk that it's a no shooting oh, zone. That guy died from in a shooting. No, he, he got shot. I don't think he died. I think he died. I thought he survived the shooting. The sword guy? Mm-hmm. That's troubling news to me because I remember when he got shot. I remember it like when JFK got <laughs> shot. I just keep those both of those in my head. Uh, I thought he got shot and lived. I have no idea now. Oh, You're making fuck. me question everything about me. Damn. Well, I think, listen, uh, uh, I know, and we all know, and you know very well, that black men and young black men in particular have been the boogeyman for those who are racist and think that only uh, uh, straight, wealthy white men should have a say in anything. I mean, I didn't think they should be the only ones who have a say in anything, just a more weighted one. Yeah, what the fuck? I'm just kidding. <laughs> Wait a minute, I just agreed <laughs> with you blindly. <laughs> Oh my God! Uh, <laughs> oh, that is great when you can do that to people to check if they're listening or just waiting for their turn to say something. And you go, no, I'm not saying white men should have the only voice, oh. just a more weighted one. She goes, yeah, and that's the dangers of doing a show. Yeah, right. right? There's, no, that's the dangers of not listening to the host. I think I was. Maybe no. I did agree with you. No, you were waiting to. You had I a heard good what point. You, said. you had a good point to make, and you were like, I'm, I'm getting that shit in there. Oh, man. So you think, wow, Uh, that's interesting. You think straight white men should have more of a say than anyone else? No. I mean, the country wasn't. Why would I ever say that? The country wasn't a better place when we did it that way, but that could just be a coincidence. I would literally never say that. We've been the boogeyman from them since the first day they brought us to this country. Right. Oh, yeah. You were the boogeyman. 
but we're so badass that we just took the boogeyman and went, oh, you want to go to boat ride? Trink. Put shackles on you and manacles and made you row a boat back oh to God. North America. Dude. Yeah, we really thought you were the boogeyman. What the fuck? What is with this fucking stick up your ass victimization mindset that people like Joy Reid and this asshole have that they think everyone's out to get them? All these white people are just... Dude, it is... It's the fucking explanation for they'll, their failure every fucking time. Every time some bad shit happens in the black community, every time some black mayor fucks up and is corrupt or dirty, it, there's got to be a white person behind it pulling the strings and, oh, we're the boogeyman, they're afraid of us. That's why you suck at your job? None of us fucking care. Do you know how many white people want anything to do with Baltimore? Fucking zero. You've had carte blanche to run the thing and you suck at it. If you need to call us the boogeyman, fine. But that just means you're a chicken shit who can't own up for his own failures. Oh, dude, we've been the boogeyman forever. Really? Tom Foolery. Tom, oh, sorry. I, was, I just fucking had it with smug bastards like him. Yes. Yes, yes. Uh, and um, he talks like he knows what the fuck he's talking about. He's an uh, asshole. I, oh, God, I don't want to do this when we're not on Rumble. And he's fucking, he's supposed to be talking about the bridge collapse. By the way, they're yeah, saying we're talking about our blackness and how it's a problem. They're saying the right blames DEI diversity. Uh, I know this diversity, equity, and inclusion for mm -hmm. bridge collapse. Well, the fucking captain of the ship was a DEI hire. Uh, not that that was the reason it happened. I mean, the fucking ship had a power malfunction, but still, <laughs> you'll you'll allow it. Well, the engine kept turning on and shutting down, and people were confused. They thought it was saying. Akbar, and then hit the bridge, but it was really just power malfunctions. And what they mean by DI, in my opinion, is duly elected incumbent. Uh, we know. Oh, Whoa. get it? Uh, no, no, no. They want to say, uh, but they don't have the courage to say the N word. And the fact that I don't uh, uh, believe <laughs> in their. Uh, untruthful and wrong ideology and i am very proud proud of my heritage and who i am and heritage where I heritage no uh it's pronounced heritage her wait heritage. no hold on it's pronounced heritage miss a mayor sorry i get fuck this guy i hate people like him not black people. I just people like him and people like her who can't take fucking black failure and learn fucking lessons from it. Instead, gotta be a white boogeyman behind it. Boogeymen are spooky though. Do what? They're scary. Sure. Is no, it, they are. No, very much so. Is it untoward to say that they're spooky? No, they are no, you're right. I that was on me. No, I just fucking had it. From the inner city of Chicago to fucking Kensington to Baltimore to San Francisco to Los Angeles, it's always just if the black community fucks up, it can't be we should maybe take some responsibility and do some things better and value families and do all this. It's got to be white people fucking with you. Of you understand that in those places in those communities, white people who have had wanted nothing to do with it forever. Forever. Amen. As long as forever old men amen. sit and talk about the weather, as long as old women sit and talk about old men. Yeah. I come from scares them uh, because me being at my position means that their way of thinking, their way of life of being comfortable <sighs> and suffering and while everyone else suffers is going to be at risk and they should be afraid because that's my purpose in life. And the oh it's to God. scare white people. Oh yeah, your purpose is to scare white people. Ooh. This guy exhausts me. So he wants to be spooky to white yeah, he, people. He does, he wants to be spooky to white people. Okay. Fuck this guy. That fucking blowing smoke up your own ass attitude. Yo, bro, that's great to cock off and fucking flex like that. But, you know, go ahead. Fucking hit a shot, would you? Oh, look at him dribble. Oh, look at him go. Oh, man, he's flashy as fuck. Look at that football. Hit a fucking shot. Do something. Blow smoke up your ass all day. Black is beautiful. White people are coming to get me. Improve your fucking city. Do something for Baltimore. Make it good. Call me the boogeyman all fucking day. I don't care. Your city the one is the one that's rotten in hell and turning to shit under your watch. I just don't understand how we got to a point in this society where we got to 
blaming something like a because, DEI for a bridge collapse, but, man. But because that's the way Let's, this fucking guy was we, raised. This is nothing is his guy. fault. There's a failure and maybe incompetence. That has nothing to do with your skin color. I'm sorry. Nothing is his fault. It's always white people. There's always an, see black is beautiful and it never makes any mistakes. So if any mistake, this fear of losing, this fear of making a mistake, this fear of acknowledging that maybe you can work on something is going to crush guys like this because they're going to get to 40 or 50 years old and realize they've wasted their entire fucking life on a Ponzi scheme. Yes, thank you. Um, I would like to correct something. You're I welcome. Said. Hey, I started the show for you. Fucking Aaron Kumia over here. Look at me getting all... Oh my God, I was up. just thinking that. Um... But I was thinking more like April Pumia because I was about to say something. Oh weird. boy! Um, no, I'd like to correct. They're not human. She's going to say <sighs> savages. I'd like to correct something I said. Okay. The right. So it says the right blames DEI for bridge collapse. Well, I said I don't know how we got to a point where we do that. I would like to point out that I'm not above acknowledging that we might have hired whoever was captaining that ship. Uh, that guy might have been a DEI hire or girl or whoever it was. Dude, it, yeah, it was an uh, accident. Yeah, but yeah. Th it's typically an accident. But I do understand like these plane crashes and certain things are happening due to certain types of hires, oh, where shit. somebody maybe isn't qualified, and they're hired for another reason. And I'm well, really skirting this because we're not on rule. I disagree with you. I watched a movie once, and it showed me that black women got us to the moon. So. <sighs> You're wrong. Yeah, it was Shaniqua that was on the first, first second. Movie. By, by the way, you know. The she goes, that be one small step for me and y'all taking big steps, dog. The coding 100. racism. 100. <laughs> Straight busting on the moon, motherfucker. Knocking around moon men and shit. Kicking moon rocks. Fuck you talking about. How that moon dick feel? <laughs> oh, Before God. we even knew the nationalities of Twerking the men, Maria Bartiromo was out there talking about open borders and trying to somehow signal that they wanted to go after the brown people too, because of course that is their other target. We know that the men who are doing this- Do you ever get fucking tired of, po this is my problem with people like him and her. I can't watch her. Do you ever get tired of pointing the finger at everybody else and your situation not getting any better? Do you ever get tired of it? Do you ever learn a fucking... Oh, wow, we've been blaming white people for all our problems for decades now. And uh, we just keep seeming to slip further and further into shit. It's Weird. Just, it's fucking exhausting. I don't understand people. Oh, God. And you can't even blame like a certain like race or color of people that do this because white people do I can do point it a few too. fingers if it would make you feel comfortable. White people do this too, though. Women, mostly. They fucking make everything about your skin color. It has nothing to do about your qualifications or your capabilities to do much of anything, does it? Unless you, would, you grew you up would in a neighborhood not. where you, you would, weren't getting an education. I'm yeah, sorry now, that happens to some. Yeah, but now they're throwing but, that shit at you in the education system, too. Like, it's just, this isn't even going to be a debate pretty soon. Like, enough young people are going to go up through the education system and just think this horse shit. Yeah. That it's just going to overwhelm everybody else. But you else. know what? Uh, the poor kids are just as smart as the white kids. <laughs> That's what they say. Hard construction work overnight, trying to fix the potholes on this bridge, working very hard, uh, we're Latino. And, and so that's now on the table, too. We know that this ship, which came from Singapore, was piloted by... A oh, Singapore. Oh, oh, you bring greater dishonor to your ship. Latino pothole uh, fillers are this nation's backbone. Latino pot filler, <laughs> pothole fillers is this nation's backbone. Very heroic crew from India who's made a call saved lives. That is right. There's somebody crashing into the bridge. Somebody should get here very, very quickly. This is going to be a bad situation. We didn't call in this one. That is right. My brother is a doctor. He is very, very good. Maybe saved lives, but did. So this is a full-throated attack. But this is I also what America is. It is people of Sorry. multiple races who do the hard work to make America work and literally make it work. Nobody said it wasn't. You're the one sitting here making this all about race and then yelling at the rest of us for making it all about race question mark i just have to know like you guys you want racism to quit being a thing and you want everyone to have the same opportunities and be talked about the same and all that bullshit you know all great stuff but you keep blaming everything on skin color and saying everyone else is doing it but it's you it's it's bean nanners come on as the kids say uh let's I'm go exhausted i've got uh I got a couple super chats that I did not get to. Oh, there we go. Wasn't me with 20 bucks. 
Says, dude, newsflash, his audience is your audience. Hashtag Godspeed, hashtag good show. What, the black mayor of Baltimore? No, Joy Reid. Oh, Joy Reid? Joy Reid and I have the same audience. Okay, well, shit. Thank you. That makes me feel crappy. I appreciate that. 175 away from today's goal. Uh, Thank you guys very much for your contributions. We do appreciate it. We're going to do a half hour of overtime if we knock that out. So if you feel like contributing... Uh, 175 is the number. I'm going to make you watch that video that I had to watch. I didn't do anything. Because that move is uh, forbidden in no, that video. There was video. like a big bug that it flicked Oh, out. oh. Well, it crawled like, up my asshole. That's why I'm so crabby about <laughs> the black mayor of Baltimore today. Uh, Trent Gray says, but do they want to stop racism being a thing, April? No. Do they really? No. No, what, Trent what would is they- right. They say they do. But they don't want it to really because it's something they can cling to right. for importance. Someone they can sing to. Please come to Boston for the springtime. Sorry. Uh, Cynically Insane says, without racism, they would be subject to accountability, which is not their strongs. Love that chicken from Popeye's. There you go, Brett hey. Mack. Popeye's is delicious. There you go, buddy. Uh, <laughs> bring... Doc, Dark Fox says, bring tarring and feathering back. <laughs> Jesus. I didn't think we were going Woo! that far, but. I mean, that's a bit rich, but. I mean, okie dokie, artichokey. I'm not going to kink shame. Uh, 175 away from tonight's goal. If you guys want to click that PayPal, uh, get in that Venmo, do the super chat thing. We do appreciate it. Uh, looking to get all that knocked out so we can do 30 minutes of overtime just for you. Just for you. Uh, Steve-O is pissed at Bill Maher, and I actually think Steve-O's got a good point. Okay. Uh, I don't I don't know how many of you followed Jackass or followed Steve-O, but it, his story's actually pretty impressive. Yeah, I um, think so. He was a junkie the entire time Jackass was on. Like, the TV show, then the movies. Uh, wasn't me with five bucks. Says, no, MLC, his audience is your audience. Overlap. Not really. You'd be surprised. Mm-hmm. Most of our audience is from our, ra- our old radio show. We do have some who came from that world, but we kind of ran them off on purpose. Uh, we got a lot of ROTC people. We got a lot of Bubba people. Yeah. Uh, you know, that day wave, night wave crossover. But most of our audience is our old radio audience. Wasn't me, and I appreciate the five bucks. Thank you. But most of our audience came from the radio show. So I... I, I respectfully disagree, if you will. Oh, here we go. Uh, Scarface with 499 says Baltimore is 62% black. It's not DEI. It's you get the corruption you vote for. Mm-hmm. The wire was over 20 years ago and is still relevant. Isn't that crazy? Yeah, why didn't wasn't Mies 20 show up in the, uh, in the fan funding option here? That's too bad. Well, thank you either way, and thank you, Scarface, for the five bucks. So that means we're 165. Thank you. Away from tonight's goal. Again, Streamlabs, PayPal, Super Chats, et cetera. Thank you. So, uh, yeah, Red Fox Mad says press one in the chat uh, if you're an OG radio listener. Sure, you can do that. But uh, Steve-O, like I said, junkie the entire time Jackass was on, got himself clean. And I've performed, I've opened for Steve-O once, and I've hung out with him, tw- I think he was in town twice. I've heard this so many times. And he's... <laughs> Like, he's just a really good guy. He's just a really cool dude. He's super personable, really nice. He was great on the show. Uh, He was fun to hang out with backstage. He was really kind and and generous with his time. Uh, Has a great time on stage. Steve-O's just a really cool, down-to-earth guy. He is. Been sober for 16 years now, which it's amazing, man. People stop doing... Like, whether it's heroin, crack, cocaine, whatever you, meth, uh, booze, whatever people get addicted to, cigarettes even, they get addicted, they they quit, and they they still crave it all those years later. Like, my dad would tell me that, uh, like, he was probably 50 years old, so he'd stop smoking cigarettes and crack uh, (laughs) 20 years earlier. No. (laughs) No, he stopped smoking cigarettes. Yeah, he stopped smoking cigarettes for 20 years. And he told me, he said, when people are smoking, he likes to be around them. Yeah. Because he likes the smell. I'm like, that smell is fucking disgusting. It's gross. Um, I'm I'm in limbo on that one, too. My grandma 
died of COPD because of her smoking habit. Okay, she quit like ten years before she died, but it was too late. Uh, it just the COPD like caught up to her sure. eventually. But like being around people who smoke for me now, like that smell brings me both like bad feelings because she died, but like good feelings because it smells like her. So it like brings me comfort at the same time. Uh, it, yeah. It's a really weird thing. Los Federales says I'm 11 months sober today. Congratulations, man. That's Thanks. very, Thanks. very cool. Uh, yeah, Dark Fox says I'm the same with cigarettes. Uh, Sea <laughs> Dog says, Aaron, that's your claim to fame, you knowing Steve-O. No. I had, God, what an autist. I had a story about the guy. I've met him. I've hung out with him. He's a good guy. I'm sorry that that makes you uncomfortable. I don't know what to tell you. Stop living your life this way. So Steve-O was going on Bill Maher's Club Random show. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we've seen Bill's setup. We've played clips from Club Random before. Yes. There's booze. There's weed. There's all that stuff. All sorts of stuff. Steve-O wanted to go on Bill's show, but he said, Bill, could you not smoke weed? Sure. You know, yep. I've, I've got a problem. I've been clean for 16 years. And you got to think once you get to 16 years, you value that so much. Oh, yeah. I never looking back that you don't even want to take a risk, which is tough now because a lot of places have legalized that. Yeah. I, I don't even think Steve, -O, uh, if I remember right, stays at bars past a certain amount, of, a certain time at night. OK. Because he doesn't want to be tempted. Uh, let's go ahead and watch this. This is uh, Steve-O talking about his interaction with Bill. This kind of makes Bill look like a dick. I, I just wanted to say something. That uh, I watched uh, a piece of, of your appearance on Bill Maher's show. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> I, I found uh, the way he spoke to you to be rather insulting. <laughs> I, I don't need you to respond. Oh, is that Patrick Bet David, the political guy? I don't know. I think that's him. To that, it's more of a comment than a question. Um, but uh, did uh, d are you a guy who, who enjoys smoking marijuana or breathing in marijuana? Marijuana is very good for me, but I don't smoke weed. Uh, every what? I don't know. Did that make sense to you? Uh, unless he eats something, I don't. Marijuana is very good for me, but I don't smoke. Well, yeah, maybe at a. Uh, so he doesn't smoke it. That's just a weird fucking way to say yeah, that. Yeah, he did say that funny. Marijuana is very good for me, but I don't smoke weed. Uh, every time I've had, I've enjoyed it, but man, I haven't done that for oh. God knows. I Mid to late 20s, last time, so okay. mid 20s. Yeah. I, I bring that up. In, in, in fairness, no offense to our audience who still partakes, that's probably where you should leave. Okay, it. so maybe he is saying that he enjoys smoking weed, but he doesn't do it. Because he's a grown up, and smoking weed is for children. It's for people in their 20s. Like, if you're 40 and you're like, I'm going to smoke weed, it's a little weird. You know? Yeah. It's a little weird to smoke weed in your 30s. For Unless it helps you with something. I mean, if it's medical, I'm not going to deny anyone their medicine. I guess. But I don't know. I like, don't know. I. But then again, like, Snoop Dogg and Willie Nelson, I guess they're cultural touchstones and they smoke. Uh, I guess, Rick you know, Flair? Dude, Ric Flair's doing that shit because he's fucking broke. Ric Flair is smoking weed to stay alive <laughs> because he has no other way to make money. Fair enough. Oh, uh, I, you know what? I think I'm wrong. I think my take was off on that one because I'm thinking about like Snoop Dogg, Mike Tyson, mm. Willie Nelson, all these people who are like looked at as cool and famous and shit, and they smoked weed until they're 90. So fuck me. I'm a square. Because for me, I'm a, a, a clean and sober guy. Like, it's very important that I maintain my sobriety. How long, how long have you been? Uh, approaching 16 years. Get out of here. Of, yes, I, 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 isn't I, that great? That's got to make Steve-O feel good when people go, holy shit. It makes me feel old. That Steve-O's been around long enough to be sober for 16 yeah, years? Yeah, because jackass feels like yesterday for me. So wait a minute, he got clean in 08? Wow. I knew, it was, I knew you had to. I didn't know it was 16 years. I'm about to be six, sweet Good 16 for you, bro. Up Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you very much. And and it's there's there's nothing, it, like really, there's nothing that I value more than my sobriety. There's nothing more that, uh, that I protect than, right. than my recovery. And um, it, it, I found it kind of upsetting when, uh, when, when the Bill Maher podcast, which I saw you on, reached out and they, they they you know his thing is he smokes pot the whole time while he interviews people and and i i said hey i'd happily go on there but but could he while i'm on out of respect for my sobriety could he refrain from smoking and he pot? said no he said no that's a deal breaker wow. 
Wow. Wow. You can't even like get off, like go take a break or something, do it offset. I don't even, I don't know if I respect Bill for that or I find Bill to be a weirdo for that. Yeah, that is troubling actually because it is Bill's <laughs> show. So he right. shouldn't be like asked to not do the thing I, he likes doing. I guess the right take but, on that is Steve-O goes, hey, I, hey if I'm going to be on your show, like can you not smoke weed? And Bill Maher goes, look, I'm not going to stop smoking weed. And Steve was like, well, I'm not going to do your show. And I'm going, all right, then new rule, fine. You're not on the show. That I guess that's fair. That's the fair take to yeah, have, right? I guess. Steve-O doesn't need Bill Maher. Bill Maher doesn't need Steve-O. Oh. So if Steve-O goes, don't smoke weed on your show, and he goes, how about fuck you, don't tell me what to do. Okay, well, then that's your guys' position. Guess, yeah, I do see that side. Like, it is Bill Maher's show. Yeah. I'm going to ask him not to smoke pot, but then again, like, it would be like if you went on Hot Ones and you went, I'm a vegetarian. Don't feed me wings and hot sauce. What? <laughs> Delicious. Hey, you want to be on my show, Hot Ones? I'd love to, but I'm not hungry. I like that show. Do you mind if I come on and I just don't eat anything? Like, no. I just skip the wings. Yeah, no, you have to eat the wings. Oh, the guy from Hot Ones is a fucking dick. You could just put a dab of like hot sauce like on your- Who are you, Hillary Clinton? Yeah. Evil. Wow. And, and and Mike Tyson's podcast is wow. called Hot Boxing. Like the the whole point, like be real. All of these prolific potheads. I've been on their shows. Steve-O, I understand that. I understand Mike Tyson's show is called Hot Boxing, but there's a double meaning between that. I mean, I know there's the weed part, but also Mike yeah. Tyson was a world famous boxing. boxer. So boxing, weed, hot boxing, Mike Tyson. Box. Hot boxing is naked, right? And <laughs> yeah, it's the only way. And it wasn't so important to them to blow marijuana smoke in my face. I did but not know that. For Bill Maher, it was a deal breaker. <laughs> and, and I found, I may, and maybe that's why, you know, whatever, uh, you kind of see through the lens. So I watched you and the way you spoke to other, uh, I could probably see him say the most innocuous thing and find it insulting. <laughs> you know, you know, you know, to me. You know what, though? Like. Bill's old. Yeah, setting his ways and shit. I don't know. Yeah, so if somebody says, hey, Bill, if I come on your show, do you mind not Whoa. smoking? Do you mind not smoking weed? And Bill goes, uh, fuck you. How about no? Chat went bananas. They, uh, they wanted to talk about some things. Yeah, I mean, I, look, I think it's fine. If Bill doesn't want to stop, then don't go on his show. It is a show, yeah. Uh, Root says, why the fuck wouldn't you respect somebody's sobriety? Would I? Yes, right, yes, absolutely. Yes, most people would. But if you're the likes of Bill Maher, maybe you don't. Because it's his show. And he's a big name. I don't know. Yeah. Skills Carmite says he smoked in front of pregnant Candace Owens, too. Yeah, Bill just doesn't fucking stop. So I don't, I don't know. I, I don't know, man. It, it's a maybe he just didn't want Steve-O that bad. Yeah, maybe he was just like, oh, this one seems easy. Colt C says, Aaron is going to sound like that before long. He never rests his voice. I might get more fans. That voice that is kind of rough to listen to, though. You don't like that voice? No. Uh, Sean says, I used to love Steve-O and hate on Bill Maher, and now it's the exact opposite, I think. I don't know. Bill, I was talking to Bill, I was talking to some, I wasn't talking to Bill Maher. I was talking to a couple of uh, older dudes about Bill Maher this weekend. Okay. And like they were, you could tell they probably had an opinion on Bill. So I wanted to kind of, you know, middle of the road it. You know, you don't want to step up. I don't, I don't like starting debates in real life. But believe it or not, I don't like, you know, getting people into the weeds in politics and conversations. Okay. So with Bill Maher, I said, oh yeah, I find Bill, you know, funny a lot. I go, but also, you know, Bill always thinks he's the smartest guy in the room. So I kind of like both sides did. They're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's like Bill... I think Bill's just an old pothead who's stuck in his ways and he takes it as an insult when someone asks him to stop smoking weed. I guess. That's about it. I mean, can't teach an old dog new tricks, I suppose, even if it's to not smoke weed for an hour. Yeah. Uh, is it me or does Steve-O sound like Whoopi Goldberg? A little bit. A little. A little bit. Uh, he'll come on the show and only talk about his sobriety. That's all he is now, an idiot who got sober, says you ain't getting my money. I get that. I know when a lot of, a lot of people, when they get sober, they kind of become... Like, that's their thing. Yeah, but also, you got to look at it through their eyes. Mm -hmm. It saved their life. It did. Yep, they wouldn't be here otherwise. Yeah, Steve-O was going to die. <laughs> like, so now, if all he wants to talk about is his sobriety, I think he's kind of earned that. 
by yeah, getting himself it's, clean. It's a great prize to have for his hard work. Yeah. Um, uh, Skills says, but Bill respectfully did not smoke for a comic that had a special he was taping soon. Well, yeah, see? So that's weird. Bill has his own set of morals. And I guess one of them is fuck Steve-O and him not wanting to smoke weed or Bill to smoke weed in front of him, I suppose. Mr. Q says, I want to know who cares. They're both washed up and mm. done being relevant. Ooh, I don't know. Bill's still got a show that a lot of people watch. Yeah. And Steve-O's mm -hmm. podcast does pretty well. And yeah. Steve-O was just in a $100 million movie a couple, like a year or two ago. The Jackass Forever. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. So I know that. they're still both kind of relevant, um, I would say. Are you having any fucking allergies today? No, Am what's I, your, what's your all deal? All my shit's like itchy and like dry as shit and fuck. You are, and I'm sneezing uh, again. I'm trying really hard not to sneeze this whole show and it's you're, tough. You're having, you're having a problem. Uh, can I buy you this site? Oh, I'm sorry, Los Federales. Links in PayPal don't work. Oh, yeah. Put it in the chat. Please. I'm sorry, buddy. Yeah, you're gonna have to put the link in the chat because I they don't work in PayPal. But thank you for the dollar. I appreciate that. Uh, boys and girls, uh, 165 away from tonight's goal. So we are getting very, very close. Yes, thank We've you. We've got a half hour left to hit it, and if we hit it, we'll do a half hour of overtime. But uh, 160 is the number. What is? I I, I will say uh, yesterday I did get a nosebleed. It's dry. Yeah. I'm telling you, I keep telling you, look at my knuckles. I drink plenty of water. Shit is just dry right now. It's yeah. um really brutal on everything, I think. And I think that's why my shit all feels dry and sneezy now. I'm about to have to ask you if I can go fucking piss and blow my nose again. Oh, my God. This is what Los Federales wanted to buy us. Darky toothpaste. <gasps> what the fuck? Plus How fluoride protection. From Holly and Hazel, Darky Toothpaste. I'm guessing you can't use this shit anymore. But it's an okay. Set what 19, in the actual fuck? 1970s. Okay, so you would just have this as like a fun little thing. I mean, Los Federales. They had five star rating. Look, Los Federales. I'm never gonna stop someone from buying shit for the show. Michael B says drink four gallons of water a day. Yeah, I'm thinking that's where Oof. we're at. I think we're gonna have to drink just a. Bunch of fucking water because it's dry as shit. I haven't everywhere. Had a, I haven't had a nosebleed in years. I used to. I used to have daily and nightly nosebleeds, uh, really? whether it was winter or allergy or hay fever. It was all year round. I used to wake up with nosebleeds. My pillows fucked all the time. Yesterday, I'm just sitting prepping the show. April had been uh, down here, and then she went up, and then right as she went up, I just like a spot of blood hit my shirt. Yeah, it's fucked. And I'm like, what the. Fuck? It's Fuck. bad. I, I, I keep telling you, like, my knuckles are never like this. I cannot, this is going to sound shitty, I cannot wait for humidity. I can't wait. Uh, dot, dot, dash with five bucks. Thank you, buddy. 160 away from knocking out tonight's goal. You guys are getting there. Thank you very much. You guys jump in there. Keep throwing in a couple of bucks, and we're going to knock that thing out in no time with about 25 minutes left in tonight's show. Yes, April? Why is everyone saying clip it? What do we say? Oh, the nosebleeds. They're going to uh drugs and whatnot. Come on, guys. Do you know how many reasons those occur? I spent my entire childhood with those and into college, man. People do that. Uh, uh, as we continue on here, we can get bogged down in nosebleeds and dry weather and allergies and everybody can talk about look that. Look at this. But we're only, look, we're 160 away. I want to knock that out tonight. So thank you very much. Continue your generosity. We, I want to get to this Tory Spelling thing because this could be something April and I steal. Uh, Tori Spelling broke the news to Dean McDermott that she had filed for divorce in the middle of their podcast. Now, That's bold. you know, there's a there's a, a stereotype about Hollywood actors and actresses that they're vapid, self centered, mm -hmm. attention whores. Nothing really goes to solidify that stereotype than telling the audience on your podcast before you tell your husband that you're divorcing him. However. I think most people, I don't think most people are like surprised by divorces. No. I think you kind of see it coming. I feel like you do something like that. Like do it on the show? Yeah. No. Really? No, that's not how I did mine. I'm, I'm a lot more grandiose. <laughs> Look. 
I, I have a lot more showy ways of doing it. Yeah, Aaron just announcing it on a show would have been tame. Yeah, if I would have said, hey, guys, uh, my, my wife doesn't know this, but I'm getting a divorce. Uh, would have been <laughs> would have been a lot more uh, a little more kosher, a little more kosher than the way I I did. We'll burn that bridge when we get there. All right, let's. Uh, My let's, eyes are watering, holding back this sneeze. <laughs> let's uh, listen to Tori Spelling uh, and her divorce announcement on her show. Hi, I'm okay. How are you? Okay, I hate to do this to you while you're in the middle of you're going to work and everything. Oh, wait, she's doing this on the phone? What the fuck? What a bitch. They don't include his audio. So she records herself breaking the news to her husband that she's divorcing him? Use this in the divorce proceedings. What an asshole. Um, they're, they've done it. It's like one, it's just the formality. It's like a one sheet you check off and next you'll have to sign it. You have a lawyer? Wait, it's going to be spun what way? That I had enough of you? What? What do you mean? I, I mean, in all honesty, after this whole journey, I, if it's about that, like who files first, the other person's wrong, If they, I feel like I deserve to file first then. Oh my I, God. This is so not a conversation I'm supposed to be hearing. I don't want to hear this. Yeah. You ever listen to couples fight and you're like, I shouldn't be here for uh, this? Yep. That's a real thing. You're just like, I should. Like, some people fight in a way like they don't give a shit other people are around. And you sometimes. <laughs> I'm right here. And you sometimes <laughs> have to go to that. Guys, guys, I'll, I'll. You guys either stop or I gotta, like, I gotta bounce. Uh, can you pause this for one second while I leave, <laughs> please? Guys, I gotta fucking go. I don't know if you know this about um, yourselves, but this is remarkably uncomfortable. I don't want this to change my opinion of you. <laughs> Typically, you know. So she's she's on her podcast. Like what a what a basic Hollywood bitch to be like, ah, I can record that for my podcast. It'll be content. It sounds like the two of them don't neither of them want to be married to each other. No, not at all. And the only thing he's worried about is now he's gonna look like the asshole. Mm -hmm. Both That's of true. them are vapid cunts because if the thing you think about with your divorce is how is the public going to perceive me, you're a a, a bankrupt human being. It's like, it's a really shitty way to think. You should be thinking, thank Christ somebody filed. We're fucking out of here. Yeah, that's true. Well, I mean, you basically put it all out there with Daily Mail. Like you said, everything that you've done to me over the years. So I think it would make perfect sense that it's followed up that I would file. Because those are things I would never have divulged to anybody and you did. So I don't know. I'm, I, I assume that'll come later. I don't. I think it's just, yeah, it's just like a one sheet where you, you literally like check like divorce and like irreconcilable differences. Yeah. Okay. I love you. Oh, don't do. No, 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 no. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do. I love you at the end of I'm recording our divorce announcement for our podcast. That hey, you know, I signed the paper. Oh, you're you're worried people are gonna think you're a fucking asshole because I filed first? Well, I kind of deserve that. That's something I should be allowed to do. Okay, love you. <laughs> like what what kind of sociopathic bullshit is that? I have no idea. I really <laughs> Hey, I can't wait to fucking leave you. By the way, love you. Yeah, I would never be able to do that, I don't think. <laughs> like, hey, it's See you later, but I love you still. Let's keep in touch. I hate it when people do that. We're like, I still love you. I, no, you don't. This wouldn't be happening if there was still love there. Like, if you right. love someone, you you work it out. You make. If you don't love it, the whole point of getting divorced is that a hard thing is happening. That if you loved each other, you would find a way through it and get to the other side and find a way to survive. If you, you find out you don't love each other anymore when you're like, I don't want to fight to get through this... That's how you know you, there's no love. Right. So you don't end that conversation with, I love you, schnookums. <laughs> I love you, schmookaby. What? That's not something that, yeah. You, you don't just say, passive aggressively you shit on this guy for, for, for five you minutes. You shit on him and then you end it with affection. I don't get it. It's like betraying Jesus and then kissing his cheek. Yeah. Or getting down and kissing his feet because that's what he was into. That's what, yeah. You do what Jesus wanted you to do. 
That was the whole point. Uh, yeah, I that whole thing is fucked up. Uh, the whole, like, recording the fucking announcement. Yeah. Oh, no. It's, uh, don't do that. Probably don't do it publicly in general. Obviously, we were kidding yeah. earlier. Um, that's a really private conversation to be having. Right. Are you annoyed? Uh, yeah. I'm annoyed. <laughs> I'm a little uh, anxious, I suppose. I have to pee severely bad, yeah. too. No, I'm annoyed. You mind if I go pee quick? That's that's kind of a late notice thing. Yes, mute the mics quick. Yeah. Ask. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Why don't you Why don't you go? Uh, would you like anything? Okay, the apple pie that's in there. Shake it a little, and then pour it like two or three fingers in the glass, maybe three. Okay. I'll take the rest. You know that what? sounds good. Just take the rest of that jar and pour it in a glass. There's a jar in there that's been used hey. from this morning. No, no, no. There's not much left. Just use that jar. Okay. I'll be right back then. I'm well, I will be right back. I have to pee and do this shit, apparently. Sean says, I started the show for you. Very good. You did a wonderful job, honey. Thank you. Uh, Sean says, seeing as how Aaron is not reading chat, press one for next. <laughs> Sean, I am really getting tired of you nexting all my shit. You're making me feel like I'm not a good performer. All right, let's talk about these guys. We've got uh, less than 20 minutes left in uh, tonight's show unless you guys can hit that $160 mark, and then we'll add uh, the 30 minutes of overtime to the end of the show. So everybody team up. This is honestly one of those distances where I think 10 bucks at a time is going to knock it out just fine. There's no issue. Uh <laughs> Not sure, right? Do you guys think Steven Crowder is gay? Seems like it. Welcome to 2017. If you didn't know Crowder was a mo, what have you been watching? It's okay if you just discovered Crowder and you went, I think this guy's gay. But if you've been watching Crowder for years, you go, I'm starting to think that maybe this guy might be a bit of a Peter Puffer. Uh, all right, let's, uh, Laundry Room says, get us 30 more minutes. You hacks. Uh, Drew Fologist. I, dude, if you don't like the show, that's fine. I'll help you out. There you go. There you go. Oh, dude, money should just come to your show. No, that's not what I do. How about that? I have a number. I need to hit my number. If you don't like it, eh, it's not for you. No hard feelings, buddy. Don't you worry. I would definitely find a show you like rather than just obsessing about one that causes you problems. I don't want to be a problem for you. I don't want to be triggering to you, and I'm triggering you. I don't want to do that. So, guys, for Drew, let's knock out that 160. Let's hit the goal because it really bothers Drew that we ask. So, I want to bother Drew as much as possible. And then I want to block him from the chat so he has to sit and stew on his own because shit like that is funny to me. And look at that. MSO is watching. He's got his eyes out. He's thinking he's got himself a win today. Oh, boy. Oh, boy, it is getting stressful in Steel Toe. You got MSO watching in the wings, waiting. You've got us hoping we can get that 160 knockout. Oof. Bam Bam says, do you take payment in succulent man juices? If succulent man juices produce $100, then yes. We absolutely do. Streamlabs, PayPal, Super Chats, uh, all of that, Rumble Rants, thank you very much. There's all the links in the chat. It's also pinned to the top of the page. If you guys want to go on a rally... We appreciate it. Uh, these guys are my favorite people of the night. There's a, a group of guys in New Zealand who are walking around. And, and you know those areas that have, I know Seattle has a bunch of them. They have those rainbow sidewalks the, the or pride flag shaped and painted sidewalks. I guess some base dudes in New Zealand have just been going around with white paint and just making them regular crosswalks. <laughs> Which, which is both kind of hilarious and awesome, but sad at the same time. It's hilarious and awesome because it's like, Jesus Christ, fucking enough. Like, my thing yesterday when Biden made it Trans Visibility Day on Easter, I was like, Jesus Christ, dude, every fucking day is Trans Visibility Day. Every day. Like, you can't escape it. You can't get away from it. Like, I prep a show every day. I read the news. I go to 10 different websites. You're getting trans shit. You just don't, you can't escape it. Every day is Trans Visibility Day. It's like Easter came around and they're like, hey, we want to make sure today's still about us like every other day. And Joe Biden went, oh, sure, absolutely. 
whatever you need. You might be the only people voting for me come November, so I got to make sure you're happy. Are you keeping that hole open so your body doesn't uh, fix it up like a wound because it's unnatural? Just checking. So these guys have been, uh, these three guys have been painting crosswalks, uh, painting over gay pride flags, and now there's a manhunt underway. The police are actually exhausting resources to hunt these guys down like they're on a fucking murder spree. A second rainbow crossing has been vandalized in New Zealand this week, with police issuing a search warrant for a property believed to be linked to the three masked defenders caught on CCTV committing the act. In the early hours of Thursday morning, the individuals poured white paint onto the crossing on Karangahape Road in Auckland, arriving and leaving the scene in a car with no number plates. Oh, shit, you better get the SWAT team, man. That's fucked up. God, some of these countries are retarded. Uh, by the way, Crunchy Cynicism with 20 bucks says 100, no cap, Drew. Oh, shit, Drew, I'm sorry. Somebody just gave us 20 bucks. We take 15 of that over on YouTube. That puts us at 145. Sorry, Drew, I apologize. Guys, if you want to give us more money, there you go. There's the link in the chat. Drew doesn't like that we ask, and MSO is looking for his win tonight. So if you'd like to, uh, you know, go ahead, chip in, but don't upset Drew. I don't, I don't want to make him mad. Uh, hold on. We got one more. Oh, fuck, and I just closed it. I had somebody to thank. An old Slippery Fingers Imholt over here fucked it up. What a dumb dick. Uh, thank you very much, Von Kaiser. He says, this is for Drew and throws us 10 bucks. Thank you very much, buddy. Now we're 135 away from tonight's goal. We are getting very, very close. Thank you, guys. Uh, if you feel like chipping in, we're close enough where uh, anything you throw in matters a bunch. Let's take a look at these guys uh, committing the ultimate act of disgusting depravity, which is painting over a fucking crosswalk. Jesus Christ. Imagine this being your biggest problem in your country, that you have to hunt these guys down with all the resources you have. Here they are. Oh, my God. Oh, my God, look at that. They even bought, brought paint rollers out. Oh, if you don't hunt these guys out, we're, we're just going to allow this level of domestic terrorism? Jesus Christ. I mean, people lose re-election over stuff like this. Oh, my God. Oh, look at that guy. I mean, he is doing that, and he looks so gleeful doing it, too. Look at the hate in his heart. And he made it white, too, which we all know what that means. Colonial slavery. Oh, boy. That, oh, I bet you they're just, well, right, we got to paint over all of these rainbow queer flags on the sidewalk. Oh, hey, that's, sir, that's wet paint. Come on, you're just making those guys' job tough. Hey, what are you doing? How much you want to bet that all those cars are driving over that crosswalk just looking at those guys going, "Aye, right, great work there. Yeah, glad you're doing the Lord's work. We appreciate it. Happy Easter, gents. Because most people probably find that shit obnoxious. Please tell me what trans and gay shit has to do with a crosswalk. That it's that fucking important. That you've got to, uh, like, make it your cross. Oh, God. It's it, like I said, it's like that trans visibility day shit. It's just... When are you not visible? We never stop hearing about you. Uh, now they all have paint on their cars, says you ain't getting my money. Yeah, well, you know what? You're right. They might be a little annoyed with them. They might be a little annoyed with them to that end. That's Jesus, bigot on socialist media over on Rumble getting a little too based over there. Holy shit. Uh, guys, we have 10 minutes to knock out tonight's goal. And in that 10 minutes, we need to knock out 135. So it's not too bad. Uh, if you want to help us out, the links are in the chat. Uh, super chats, memberships, uh, gifted memberships, etc. Uh, Johnny's sending me something here. Uh, if you cover oyster bunnies from Biden. Oh, shit, the oyster bunnies thing. You know what? I don't think I have that. I hope Johnny reminds me about that for tomorrow. I appreciate it. Look at that, guys. MSO is in the chat literally flexing his muscles. He's calling a victory for himself. 
Fucking disgusting. Fucking disgusting. Uh, Machine Gun Kelly posts a video showing blackout tattoo process. Uh, this guy, there's something. Like his, I'm convinced his woman left him. I'm convinced Megan Fox is out the door. Now he's got this tattoo. This is like clearly a didn't think it through tattoo thing. This is a done in a crisis. I'm fucked up. I don't know what I'm doing thing. Like, it's like Mike Tyson's face tattoo. I'm not saying there's no coming back from it. But when Mike Tyson got the face tattoo, he was on the verge of K-ing himself. Like, he was not doing well. It was right after the Lennox Lewis fight. He was broke. People had taken advantage of him. He was talking about all the medications he was on. He was in a really bad place when he got that tattoo. The, the face tribal thing. I think Machine Gun Kelly is going through a similar thing. Again, I, you know, I'm not saying he can't come out of it. I'm not saying he won't get better. But he's fucked up. Uh, he went and got this blackout tattoo where basically from the bottom of his titties up to his shoulders and down to his wrists, he just painted himself black. Like, it tattooed, by the way. Like, that, that shit ain't... Like, he ain't getting in the shower and washing that off. It's a tattoo. That's... You're not in the right mind when you do shit like that. That's like the people who tattoo the inside of their eyeballs to change the color. That, he's always been kind of a fucked up guy. Like he's had his drug problems and everything else. I just, I think he lost the chick. I think he's probably, he's getting a little older now. Like it's not, here's the problem with Machine Gun Kelly. It was cute and quirky and silly when he was in his 20s. But now I think he's like pushing 40 and he's doing wacky shit like, oh, I'm going to tattoo myself all black, man. Great when you're 21 years old and don't know what the fuck you're doing. But like when you've got a daughter and now your relationship has fallen through and, you know, all that shit isn't working out. It, it's, it's a little, I think the guy's fucked up. I think he's going through some shit. By the way, crunchy cynicism with 10 bucks. Dale Earnhardt says, didn't you want to get a tattoo of Patrice O'Neal? <laughs> Wait a minute. That's a different kind of blackout, Dale Earnhardt. That, you know what? That's a little racist. That's a little racist. Hobo Chili with 199 says, your arms look weak. Sorry, no fat jokes anymore. Uh, crunchy cynicism with 10 bucks says, come on, guys, it's 10 bucks. Well, th with that 199 and that 10, that brings us down to 125. For the evening, 125 away and seven minutes left. Holy shit, you guys might do it. Let's see if we get ourselves a late rally to make this thing happen. 125, and it's either a, an MSO victory or, oh, there's 20 bucks from Yule Gibbons, says 20 for 20, 07. Thank you very much. We'll take 15 of that and make it 110. Oh, boy. 110 bucks away from doing overtime. Can we do it? You guys know where the links are. They are right there in the chat. You can click on that PayPal, that Streamlabs. You can do Super Chats. Are we going until 9.30 tonight, or are we done in about, oh, six minutes? I got to see when it turns over to six, because I didn't start the clock tonight. So I got to see, I think right there. Okay, there we go. Perfect. All right. We got six minutes left. We're 110 away. April's coming back for overtime. Oh, right when uh, you ain't getting my money says April's not coming back. April's not like she has not bounced back from being sick very well. She, she got the prizes done. She got all that stuff taken care of. But she, like her face is just not doing okay. Uh, crunchy cynicism with five bucks says, guys, I'm doing all the work and I'm tired. 105 away from knocking it out tonight. Says Crunchy. Can it be done? You guys jump in there too. Somebody just dropping a big hundo right now will take care of the whole thing. F about five minutes left. Oh. <laughs> April says, sorry, be right there. Love you. Fuck. I, I wish that fuck started with, I, I wish it came with a question mark. The answer would be, absolutely. All right, guys. Will MSO win? Will he get the W or will these next five minutes be the last five minutes of the MSO says it's tax time. Save your money. Uh, we got to open up our next batch of stories. We've got a ton of them left.
for OT. I do have a, a Crowder update. He sued uh, fucking not gay Jared. Remember when he's like, we don't want to do this. It didn't have to be this way. Uh, they're now suing Jared for a million dollars. Crowder's this weird guy who like keeps kicking people, like smaller people with less than him. He keeps kicking them in the teeth and going, why do you make me do this? Why do you make me do this? Why do you? It's like, dude, you're the one kicking him in the mouth. Oh my God. One, uh, Crunchy says, how much is left? 105, Crunchy. 105 is left uh, in tonight's goal with five minutes left. Uh, we got a nine-year-old leading car officers on a high-speed chase for overtime. Uh, tran oh, trans I got some Trans Visibility Day stories for you guys. Uh, weightlifter taking home first place in a women's competition. We've got an uh, Australian soccer team that went undefeated in a women's tournament. And you'll never guess who their starting five players were. Dude, it's like Ladybugs 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 all filmed at the same time. That Dude, the, I'll, I'll start with the Australian soccer story uh, if you want to. If we hit overtime today because that one is fucking... It, you're you're going to think I made it up. You're going to think it's a sketch or it's a parody. Uh, MSO's secret admirer with 100 bucks. We take home 96 of that. And that means we're only 10 bucks away. Is this from, it? Yeah. From knocking out tonight's goal. Oh, my God. Wow. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, remarkably sorry. Unexpected news I had to deal with off air quick. You good? <gasps> the fridge is beeping. I'm sorry. You left the fridge open? Oh, no. Oh, no. This stuff is so good. Guys, this came from uh, Ryan. The Ooh. I got one of the apple lumps at the bottom. Uh, I got this from Ryan the Garbage Man. He gets it for us every year. He's a good dude. Great fan of the show. My buddy. And uh, it's apple pie moonshine. I didn't think I would like it with the butter in it, but fuck, that is good. Q hobo chili recipe going, oh, you didn't think you'd like butter, you fat fuck? Thanks, pal. I love how he doesn't even need to say it anymore. I just dog walk myself into it. Oh, boy. Uh, guys, 10 bucks away from uh, today's goal. If you want to knock out that last 10 Turns out we have an extra half hour to do it. Pretty cool. Everyone just throw in 10. We'll just start knocking right. down tomorrow already. Woo. You, good, you good, homeboy? Nope. <laughs> Gonna be fine, though. Let's do this fucking show. Oh, I got to shake these up better when I drink them. The bottom is uh, very chunky. I noticed that. It kind of looks like applesauce. Yeah. I, the, the first part of it is great. Uh, I'm not the father with 10 bucks, says, because F, he is gay Crowder and his surgically enhanced chest. Well, uh, thank you very much. You. Appreciate that. Guys, we're calling that a W for the night. Cool. Thank you very much. I'm not the father. It's a win for the old steel toe. Appreciate it. That does kind of look like you're drinking gravy. It does. It As Raz put it. Let me take one more. Maybe I can strain it. I can use my teeth as like baleen. Ew. And strain the chunks. Hold on. Yeah. Is that what you're going to do now? Mm. Ryan, the garbage man, I love this stuff. It's really good. I got to figure out a way. Maybe I got to pour it through a strainer when it's at the end. The bottom of it is just too chunky. I don't even. It's chunky, but it looks too thin for a strainer. Uh, crunchy with a dollar. Thank you. Thank you very much, Crunchy. We appreciate that. You can pour it over like a paper towel over a jar and let it like sit. Oh, there you go. That might be the move. All right. We're going to talk about this Crowder thing in just a little bit. But first, I wanted to do this story because I don't think people are going to believe this. Okay. An amateur Australian soccer team has stirred controversy after the squad, <laughs> which includes five <laughs> transgender women. Come on. You've, like, you've seen the basketball teams that kill everybody and they've got one? Yeah. This one, like, they're basically their whole starting lineup is just a bunch of big hulking dudes with fake vaginas. You're punking me, right? No. That's why I said I had to mention this story for Trans Visibility Day yesterday because people weren't going to uh, believe that this was a real thing. Makes sense. Now, it's a do they dominated a women's only tournament, you wouldn't believe it, and claimed the $1,000 prize. In the, uh, the Sydney-based Flying Bats Football Club, 
went undefeated during the four-week tournament, including one game in which one of the transgender women scored six goals en route to a 10 nothing beatdown. Isn't that a lot for soccer? Babe, in soccer, whole teams don't it take like four games to score six goals. That's what I mean. Like, that's remarkably high. Yeah. Some parents pulled their daughters from matches over safety concerns. Officials from soccer clubs in the Northwest Sydney League told the paper, okay, here's my only hope I'm holding out for this. And we're going to go look at the picture of the team in just a little bit. Okay. Um, I'm hoping that this is like that Canadian teacher where they're kind of trolling. I hope so. In a way. There's a weightlifting uh, club that did that too. Yeah, there's a weightlifter who said, well, I just identify as a woman. And like clearly he was still a dude. He was just being yeah. a dick. To, like, get them. Because he's thinking, if I'm so ridiculous with this, maybe they'll change the rules. Right? Maybe. Yeah, they might. That would be nice. There's a chance. But um, <laughs> to, like, I hope that when we go look at the picture here and I scroll down a little more, I hope it's just obvious dudes and they're doing it to fuck with people. They have, like, beards and shit. Yeah. Let's, go, uh, let's go take a look. Oh, no. They're trying. No, they're okay, trying. Look, but look at the goalie. I feel like all soccer ladies are all dude bitches. So, like, which ones are which? I don't know. Okay, that's a dude. <laughs> Watch me pick the wrong ones. That's a dude. That's a dude. I don't that's know. a dude. That's a dude. The one on the bottom right. No, I think that's a what? chick. What? I think. Come on, that's a really. Oh no! Look at the legs on that. That's yeah. a dude. Okay. It's got some fucking sequoia trees for legs. So can we agree? One, two, three, four, five. Those are the guys. That's close enough. Fine. Okay. <laughs> look at, because, yeah, like, look at the legs on the girls. <laughs> look at this girl's leg. And then <laughs> I kind of figured, like, the one with the rainbow socks might have been, but probably not. I don't know. I Do we have to? Yes. It's 2024. They have to. What are you supposed to do? A bit do? absurd sometimes. They believe the flying bats. Ooh, we got a little pop up there. That sounds racist somehow. The flying bats? Yeah, I don't know why. They believe the flying bats, who are backed by Pride Football Australia, should instead play in the mixed gender games that include men and women. I bet you they'd still crush there, though. Uh, our girls are here to play for fun and expect to play in the female competition. They did not sign up for a mixed competition. But you know what? I don't know if I feel sorry for people like this yet because I need to know what their stance was before it happened to them. I agree. Um, you know, if, if you've always said that, like, hey, this is fucked up, this is wrong, this is terrible, then okay, I feel bad for you. But if you've kind of been like, well, you know, if you should advocating. be. Yeah, if you've been tolerating it and then it happens to you and you want something to change, eh, fuck you. Yeah, you, it doesn't take rocket scientists to fucking figure out that, like, dudes don't belong in women's sports, right? Right. Or biological men, sorry. Just don't belong there. So I agree. If they were out here like advocating and promoting, oh yeah, yeah trans women join our team, and then you don't like it, it turns out. I, I, I you guess saw it coming. The right? good the good news is, like maybe this happens, and I'm I should be so done having hope. But yes, that is indeed that, my not, mantra for life right now. No, I meant for the. Fun. I'm sorry, you like hit a nerve. Somewhere. No, I meant for, I meant for the thing. Doing my best. You have no idea. Uh, I meant I meant for the thing. Mm -hmm. um, I I know I'm stupid when it comes to this cultural shit. Having any hope or thinking, hey, this could be a thing because it. Ne why would it be a thing? We're just going to adapt and adjust to our new reality. Yes. But <laughs> <laughs> sorry, was that untoward? I'm sorry. That was catty. My face feels hot right now. Yeah. Mm. You angry? Anyways, this story. No, it's not about that. It's more like fear. Oh. It's fear-based. Gay. Yeah. Um, so I really should stop that, right? Yeah, you stop. Let it uh, let me be uh Jeb from uh I need you I, Red I'll Dawn. be honest Ready? right now. Listen to this before you say another goddamn word. This is going to be very painful for some of you listening to hear. Wow. Uh except for Aaron and Aaron's supporters. Look, you're all his supporters if you're here, but I really fucking need you right now. Is it a quarter after one? I'm a little drunk and I need you now. I'm not drunk, dude. I'm pretty fucking sober, actually. All right. Let me be Jeb it's from... after one. Let me be Jeb from Red Dawn. Yeah. Uh, you're sitting say, saying you have fear. Mm -hmm. uh, Jeb famously said, let it turn into something else. Like what? Let it... Rage, anger, hostility. No, can I tell you something? That's accurate. 
anytime I've ever had a fucking panic attack or anxiety, if you just get fucking mad instead, the anxiety goes away and you replace it with anger. Yeah, and it's just like be mad. righteous somehow. I'm not there yet. I can't do it. I mean, I'm not, but I have a different reality. No, guys, I'm not drunk at all. But uh <laughs> Yeah, no, just let... I, I'm fumbling, I, Like, literally. fear is gay. Like, don't... What is do you mean it? fear? Just be mad. Are you mad? A touch. Yeah, so just be mad. Fear is for fags. Look. Anyways, continue. Do you want to do the Crowder Jared thing real quick? Sure. This is fucking... This is getting somewhere. I mean, we... So, to walk you through this... And I, I feel so bad for Jared Monroe, the former Crowder producer who's trying to, you know, get out from under his NDA that he's been under yeah. for like six, seven years. Um, I feel bad for the guy because when the media talks about this, they keep having to refer to him as not gay Jared. Like, you haven't been that guy for six or seven years and still be like, uh, formerly known as not gay Jared. How uncomfortable is that? Well, Jared Monroe uh, came out recently, did a 15 15- minute video about how his former employer because he has an nda he can't say crowder uh has been legally abusive towards him has been trying to get his cell phone has been trying to figure out who he's having private conversations with because he has this nda where he's not supposed to talk about crowder okay now i believe that it should be unconstitutional even if you make someone sign something like you can't make someone sign something that makes them a slave it's illegal still the contract the contract is void the contract does not exist. You can't sign a contract that breaks the law. No, I don't think so. Right. It's a vo- the contract is void. So if you sign a contract that like, if I pay you $250,000, you have to murder this guy. Like, you can't sign that contract and then go to the judge and make, no, 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 it's totally fine. You can't charge me for murder. I said I have a contract. It was contractual. It was a contractual kill. Um, what you have to, I, I mean, I hope someday they make these NDAs illegal where... You can't stop someone from having... I think MDA... MDA. MDA. MDMAs. um, What? NDAs should only be for like public speaking, public things, stuff like that. Even then, I don't think NDAs should exist. No, it seems... But for private conversations, it should be illegal to have someone sign an NDA. Yes. Yeah, that was your conversation. People should be able to text and call and and talk shit at parties and drink and go, hey, you fucking asshole, cunt piece of shit, and be able to say whatever they want. Yeah, this does feel like you're putting shackles on somebody that you didn't uh, have the right to put on them. Right. Uh, Killer Beehive says either illegal or much less powerful. Yeah, I I would settle for much less powerful, but ultimately illegal. And so Jared comes out and, and lays all this out there. And then Crowder has his uh, toady lackey, Gerald, go do that big 30-minute thing about how this didn't have to be this way. If Jared would have just honored his NDA, we wouldn't have brought him to court and asked for his cell phone and made him stop texting his friends and got him fired from one of his jobs and sent him a cease and desist and all this other shit. Like, Crowder... And then trying to make it a conspiracy between Crowder's ex-wife and Jared that they're ganging up on him. Right. I mean... That Gerald guy is a remarkably punchable face, by the way. Oh, God. Isn't he one God, of the most hateable obnoxious. guys? Yeah. Just, oh. It just, he might as well have Crowder's dick in his mouth while he's saying that whole speech. I think that actually is part of the contract you signed. Yeah, his, uh, the dick doesn't just go on his shoulder. He actually right. has to suck it. Gerald had to suck it because Crowder's gay, in my opinion. Uh, so anyway, oh. Jared Monroe gave us an update on the Crowder situation. Now, remember... Crowder's people framed this as, oh, we really don't want to do this. Oh, it doesn't have to be this way. Oh, we don't want any problems, right? Yeah. From Jared Monroe today on X. Statement, I never tried to extort my former employer. On the contrary, they are now suing me for $1 million, (laughs) trying to cause my family financial ruin and force my silence. This baseless retaliatory lawsuit and the legal harassment that preceded it are a clear violation of the law. I will not be silenced by legal threats or smear campaigns. In response to my former employer's unlawful aggression, I have hired attorney Matt Breening and filed the following charges. Wow. So Matt Breening, by the way, I found out is like a super, uh, I was listening to ROTC today. Apparently, he's like a super commie labor lawyer. Like, he oh, okay. goes the fuck after people. Yep. 
like especially the big powerful corporations, Matt, like he wants to tear them. The, he's a dirty motherfucker, which is who you want in something like that. That is who you want. Somebody who's cunning. If you want to beat Crowder, you got to fight dirty. Fight like hell. <laughs> Ew. Oh. See. I won't say it. You see. Uh, for many years, Steven Crowder has been one of the most popular and affluent online conservative media personalities in the country. YouTube channel, blah, blah, blah. In 2018, Crowder's producer, Jared Matello, a.k.a. Jared Monroe, quit his job along with his brother. As part of quitting his job, like many other workers in the country, Jared signed a separation agreement that contained confidentiality and non-disparagement clauses. Okay. Uh, there they are, retaliatory. Now, six years later, Crowder, through his company Louder with Crowder, LLC has begun aggressively pursuing legal action against Jared. On October 27th of last year, they filed a Rule 202 petition in a Texas district court asking the court to order Jared to provide documents and be deposed about things he may have said to dozens of people about Louder with Crowder. Again, they want to go on a fishing expedition to look at this guy's phone to see what he texts his friends. I hate that. That's shitty. That stuff's a bit... <laughs> it's supposed to be private for a reason. Yeah, it, sh it should be illegal. It's yes, I agree. Like to, the, I hate that. I hate that so much. Even if you put it in an NDA, you should be able to challenge that NDA in court and have a judge go, no, that's illegal. You can't stop him from texting it's his, his friends. It's his personal device, and those are his friends. I understood if and he went- Are you going to go like police them at their bonfires yeah. too? Like if he went on Ben Shapiro's show and just started fucking laying waste at Crowder, okay, sue him. Fine. Yes, if you're broadcasting it. If it's a private conversation, go fuck yourself. But what an insecure cunt do you have to be if you're Crowder that a guy texting- bad shit about how gay you are like that, that you're gonna sue a guy over that are you out of your fucking mind what an insecure probably secretly okay. gay guy you are but we knew that this doesn't surprise me at all but that's he likes I to sue anybody who like talks down on him right but isn't he the one who always wants to go out and change my mind and debate and we should have these conversations in the open not if you quit your job when you work for me i don't need people telling you know, each other that I shove potatoes up my asshole. Don't clip that out of context. Why would you say that? I know I'm just crowd. I'm Crowder. Clip it. That's me um, being Crowder. No. That's what it is. How about, this is my original take, like whenever we first started doing this with Crowder, uh, stop doing so many shitty things if you don't want people like talking about it. I don't know, like you, to me, when you have people sign so many NDAs and like really police it so hard, like even to their private friends. Sure. You must be doing something wrong. Yeah. To that, me, like, if anyone talked anything about me, I know what's the truth and what's not. Right. It's, like, I'm not afraid of somebody talking about me. Ch correct. I've never I've had anyone. I don't have a reason to be. Yeah. So. Like, there's stuff know. we're barred from talking about on this show because yeah. there are people out there who are afraid of what we'll say. Uh, yeah, because they need, like, a certain image upheld. Right. And they're terrible. <laughs> so they don't let us say anything. But like, for example, Crowder, why would Jared? And, and also, if you didn't make people sign shit like that and you just gave them a nice severance package, for a lot of people, that's enough for them not or at least curb the bad shit they would say about you. Because yeah. they're like, look, as bad as this experience was, they let me out. They paid me handsomely. I don't want to be a dick. Yes. You know, some people are going to be scorned lovers no matter what you do. Mm -hmm. I've been accused of it from yeah, time I've heard to time. A thing or two about you. When I leave jobs and whatnot, <laughs> I've been known to. You're a fucking. Yeah, you're a scorned woman, aren't you? I've been known to maybe uh, take a flamethrower to a bridge or two. All right, I don't know what you're talking about. In my day, yeah. On October 30th, uh, attorneys for Louder with Crowder sent a cease and desist letter to Jared, instructing him to immediately cease and desist from making any further disparaging statements, written or oral. About Louder with Crowder. Yeah, Crowder. Uh, oral, please. Yeah, Crowder <laughs> prefers oral. Uh, on March 27th, attorneys for Louder with Crowder filed a complaint in a Texas district court alleging that Jared breached the NDA. In the complaint, attorneys for Louder with Crowder focused entirely on innocuous text messages between Jared and Crowder's ex wife, Hillary. Hillary and Stephen recently divorced uh, following the release of security camera footage of Stephen. Berating his then pregnant wife, and the lawyer puts the link to the oh my god, the watch it fucking watch it clip. This Jesus guy's good. I like this guy. Yeah, that's hilarious. See, you want a petty cunt. Yeah, you really do. You have to have one that doesn't like uh, 
shy away from looking like an asshole. Right, and all the texts were between Jared and the ex-wife were like, I hope Steven doesn't get those kids. He's a, he's a monster. Um, you know, it was like- That's two, standard stuff though, right? Yeah, it was two text messages. Yeah. And that was it. Uh, in the video, he snaps at her. Oh yeah, the, the video. Crowder appears to be lashing out at Jared because he allegedly reached out to Hillary as a friend during the divorce process. See, now Jared's not saying anything about Louder with Crowder, the show, or his time working on the show. He texts a friend about what kind of person he believes Steven Crowder is. Right. That's not... That's not even that bad. Like, even if he said some shitty stuff, people talk mad shit about their bosses all yeah. the time. I've heard so many terrible things said about bosses I've had from other coworkers. Yeah. I would never, like, uh, even think to repeat it sometimes. It's just so, something that happens. Yeah, it sounds like, so this thing's going down to the wire. They're going to get after it. Like, they're going to go after each other. Oh, I thought you were doing a Daily Wire joke or something. No, no, no. Well, that would. <laughs> I'm sure Ben Shapiro fucking loves this. Yeah. You know who else loves this? Glenn Beck. Glenn Beck does. He doesn't have to be a party to this anymore. Because yeah. remember, he had Steven on The Blaze. And so when you <laughs> when you go and you fucking see these two going at each other all, as John Goodman said, tooth and claw and jugular. Yep. You're like, ah, I got me Alex Stein and Dave Landau. Oh, I got nothing to worry so about. So fucking crazy. I'm good. Can you imagine? I bet you Crowder's numbers are good, though, while this is going on. I haven't checked. I wonder how Alex uh, Stein is doing all... Not Alex Stein. Damn. Uh, Alex Jones. I wonder how he's doing all the time. Is he doing okay? I think Alex is on Rumble. I think he's gotta be, That's right? That's the InfoWars network, yeah. I think. Well, then he has his own... And then, of course, he has his own company, InfoWars. Uh, let's see. Info... Oh yeah, they're oh yeah, they're two hundred twelve thousand followers. Oh, okay. Yep. Oh yeah, that's not so bad. Alex uh, getting after. Oh, they have a lot of shit on there too. Tell me why that one thumbnail looks like ROTC. <laughs> that one with the palm right. Things. Yeah, that does look like ROTC. Yeah. Wait a minute. So live twenty four seven. Who's on that? Oh, what I was like, why does this have one point four eight million views and all this other stuff has like one point eight two live twenty four? It's because it's live twenty four hours a what day. What do you put on there though? Well, whatever's on uh, Infowars, I would guess, right? What's on there right now? That that somebody like Michael and uh, forty seven hundred people come watching. To Canada it's been on for seven. It's days. One of the things I've been trying to do is get people's attention south of the border to start. Saying, listen, it's not just your. Oh my God, the Infowars chat is insane. <laughs> Jews, Jews, Jews. Oh Jews. my God. Holy shit. Jews are everywhere. Oh, that's, uh, well, that's their fear oh, over there. I see. Uh, Michael B says, I sleep to it. Oh, well, there you go. Wow, ASMR. Yeah. Let's go ahead and uh, let's do this one. We got two or three more stories. That we can do tonight. We got about 10 minutes left. Thank you guys very much, especially you, Crunchy, and you, MSO Secret Admirer, uh, for helping knock that out tonight. Uh, very cool of you guys. Thank uh, you. To get yeah. off to a great start this week. Thank you so much. Morning show, evening show, all good. Thank you. Yeah. An Oroville, California nine-year-old was behind the wheel when he sped off from officers on Wednesday. You, wow. are, you, are, you playing, are you playing the game in your head? Yep. What, the black, white, or other game? <laughs> I love you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, it's, it's there. Sometimes, uh, you know, people say your wife can't be your co-host, but when you think alike, yeah. why not? Is it clearly black? Officials said an officer encountered a sedan oddly stopped in the middle of the intersection at Grand sedan. Avenue and 4th Street yep. around 9.20 a.m. When the officer instructed the car to move, it suddenly sped off, prompting a short and erratic chase oh, no. that ended in a dirt parking lot near Plumas Avenue Elementary School. Ooh. Officials said the suspect vehicle abruptly reversed, ramming the officer's patrol car. Both vehicles suffered minor damages, but no one was injured. The patrol officer was surprised to find a nine-year-old boy behind the wheel. The nine-year-old told, told officers he had taken his mother's car with the intention of driving himself to school. A nine-year-old? Oh, so he's got a shitty single mom, so your thing holds up. Yeah, I mean, there's no dad uh, being mentioned. Uh, what color's the mom? Black. I'm going white. Huh? I'm going white mom. So he's got a worthless single mom who doesn't get him to school on time, 
probably just throws like just throws horse shit package shit at him for breakfast and goes fucking here. Throws hungry man, uh, hungry man dinners at him for uh, supper. Not even because she ain't gonna cook that shit. You microwave it, don't you? Right, but she ain't, she's not even gonna throw it in the microwave. So bad for you, by the way. She's gonna throw him like a gas station sandwich. No condiments or anything. But then you'd have to go to the gas station. Uh, she already does to get her cigarettes. Oh, yeah. Okay, you know what? Checks out. Yeah, so that's what she's doing. Or something off the roller grill. That kid's got the worst fat, sodium, and cholesterol content of any third grader in that school. Poor Churin. So he's got a shitty single mom, so he's got to get behind the wheel of the car as she nods out and drive himself to school. And, you know, in fairness to the nine-year-old, it sounds like, I mean, there, there were some setbacks, but he made it. Yeah, he got there. He knew where he was going. Yeah. If the cops wouldn't have been there to bother him, he wouldn't have backed into that cop car. He would have got himself. That's true. Don't bring your damn cop car behind his car. Right. He was fine. The kid was on the radio going, it wouldn't be nothing if it wasn't for that king shit cop. All I wanted was to get to school, sir. But they kept pushing. You asked me, I didn't ask you. People... People spitting on me, Careful. calling me half breed and all kinds of vile crap. Uh, I disavow. Uh, CP, uh, CHP said the child was safely sent to school after the necessary authorities were alerted, and the situation was uh, documented. Uh, officials said the incident serves as a reminder for drivers to be aware of their surroundings and for parents to secure their vehicles and educate children on the dangers of unauthorized driving. Yeah, I guess, or just not have a single mom who's a piece of monkey shit. I do lean on that sometimes. It's like your parents clearly don't give a shit about you. A nine-year-old shouldn't be compelled to take their mother's car to get to school. Right. Like, there should be... It seems so hack to say, but just better parenting, you know, involved. Your nine-year-old... The, the fact that your nine-year-old knows how to start the car and drive it means that he's done this before because you're such a fuck-up. Can we just, yeah, probably drove, driven her home from the bar or something? <laughs> you're probably right. But can we just stop fucking, I hate to say this, but it, it, it checks out, but like, can we just stop having children when you don't care about them? To me, this screams that the parent does not give a shit. Uh, oh, one says, hungry mans, that's rich people food. Yeah. Dude, they're so gross and bad for you. So bad. How is she going to afford the good ciggies? If she gets the kid hungry, man. Now, what's the good Ziggies? What are the most expensive ones? I don't know. Marlboro 100s? I thought they buy Newports. I don't. Do fat wi white women buy Newports? She's not white. She's white. No. 100% white. I don't think so. Single mom with a troublemaking kid? <laughs> I don't know what to say to you. Uh, <sighs> motivated kid, someone says, this kid is a legend. I, no, the, like, the kid is... The kid should ass. be fine. He cares this much about getting an education so he doesn't turn into right. his mother. In you spite know? of his mom, he's still okay. Uh, oh, can we end the show with Erica? No. Uh, I'm fine if that means it goes now. Uh, uh, we call them feral people in Australia. Medjo, that is not whoa. what we're talking about. Hey, don't say that. He was going to the corner store to find his dad. Uh, Dale Earnhardt says, what do you have against single mothers? Jesus, how much time do you have? Yeah, they're insufferable. They're fucking pigs, most of them. They're lazy fucking pigs who make their whole identity that they're a single mom. It's, it's so much more about them than it is their kid. Do you know how hard it is for me? Do you know how hard I have to do? Do you know my life is blah, 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 blah. Yeah, you know how hard it is for your kid to have a parent who's retarded? I don't need a man. I need the man. Yeah, that's about it. Sorry. Uh, Chernabog says, where would strip clubs be without single moms? Yeah, see? They wouldn't. Uh, Dale Earnhardt says, I can think of a good one. Yeah, so can I. I Look, there are exceptions to every rule. <laughs> yes. I love when people, I love when you go, hey, this group of people tends to be kind of pieces of shit. And the guy goes, oh, I know one. And we're like, we know special case. We know sweetie pie. We know you know one. We understand that you don't get the difference between universal and general. We'll break it down for you next time and explain it. But right now, we got some other shit to do, buddy. Uh, what did Los Federales send us? He's got a link for us. Oh, no. Oh, okay. It's... Uh, Whoa. Oh, wow. It's German techno version of Gloria? Interesting. No, it's Erica. What did I say? Gloria. Oh, Erica, Gloria. I get them confused. Both sang by Aryans. <laughs> I 
That's right? pretty good. not bad do i have to have a you're not welcome tattoo to play you, that? yeah you see this it means not welcome uh crunchy says gloria for me two bucks maybe on a rumble friday yeah rumble friday's fine but i heard part of that song today yeah. I'm, I'm tired of uh i'm tired of uh getting the email notification after our shows saying your video's been blocked you're actually used to it by now you should be numb to it <laughs> no i'm not i'm you, not you will play anything. No, I uh and just oh it doesn't matter. It's just uh oh, this will be I, fine. I try As my he best. plays WWE clips or <laughs> Saturday Night Live clips. I don't know, anything like that. Saturday night live clips will fuck you up too. Every time. That's for sure. Comedy Central. Uh here's a scared shitless kind of a thing for our last story of tonight's show. By the way, thank you guys so much. It's been a lot of fun. Thank you. And we've appreciated April. How about April doing a great oh. job going solo for 20 minutes? And for what? Anyway. It was good. Thank you, guys. April got us a W tonight with her uh, with her awesome work. All right, let's let's uh, let's do this story. No, no introduction needed. We only have three or four minutes. Here we go. Sinkhole at the, the North Wilkesboro Speedway could be the remnants of an old moonshine cave. Yeah, well, how fucking perfect is that, that a race car speedway? had a sinkhole open up to open up into a moonshine still. I like it. The only thing I don't like is that we have to hide moonshine stills. Well, this is from back in the Prohibition days. I know, but could that just not have been a thing? Well, cleaning the state. Well, it's fucking women's fault. Honestly, when women got the vote, the first thing they did was push to have al alcohol banned. That's retarded. Yeah. Women love alcohol. You know what their second thing Fuck was? Yourselves. Alcohol was their first thing. You know what their second thing was? Porn. <laughs> they wanted an income tax. What? Yeah. These bitches. Because the socialists who wanted the income them. tax told the women, because no. the women wanted to get rid of alcohol, and the federal government didn't have an income tax at that time. I don't claim them. As and the own. federal government said, well, the alcohol excise tax, tax, funds, tax. Like a, funds like a third of our government. So the socialists went to the women who wanted alcohol banned and went, we'll make a deal. You help us with the income tax. We'll help you with alcohol. Problem solved. Mm -hmm. So the women teamed up with those people. Right. And Retarded. they all they all got their way, and the country was so much richer for it. In, in fairness to women, back in those days, the country was like ninety percent rural, and guys would go and literally spend their entire paycheck and just go get fucked up and kick the shit out of their wives when they got home. Like it was bad. This country, like, drank. I feel like that still happens. Right, but it's <laughs> better now. <laughs> What are you saying? It's more acceptable now? We do a, we, yeah, I think we you do, do a, a more discreet job. Yeah, we, more body punches. Jesus Christ. More long Damn. sleeves. Yeah, exactly. This operation staff discovered cracks in the concrete of section N. Employees started removing seats section to a, N? they found crack in section N. That's a little, uh, on the nose, isn't on, it? On the, on the, no, Jesus. Yeah. That's the damage and uncovered an open area of roughly 700 square feet. There it is there. And for decades, Wilkesboro locals have heard stories of a secret moonshine operation still under the grandstands. And now they might be one step closer to finding out if those legends are true. One step closer. To whether the or edge. not it's rumor, whether or not it's truth. It's kind of fun to think about. <laughs> I love how these guys who even work for the Speedway are like, it's kind of fun that our speedway fell apart and went to shit in one section because we get a moonshine story out of it. So that's kind of cool. I mean, it is kind of cool, though, isn't it? It would be pretty dope if you went down there and you found all this moonshine shit. Yeah. It is kind of... A couple of skeletons. People died down there. Oh, my God. There. They uh, just got trapped making moonshine. Oh, yeah. They were doing the Lord's work. Yeah. Part of the history for this area of the community. Um, and it's one of the things that's kind of made this place, you know special over the years <laughs> areas in the foothills I like you know them. in the mountains of north carolina so you know um who knows we'll just have to wait and see that guy probably talked for another 35 minutes and they, they were like we gotta him. cut him off like dude I, I get it now yeah. <laughs> sorry have been removed from sections n and o and speedway employees are assessing the next steps and how to make repairs in time for the upcoming nascar all-star race of course that's coming up may 14th so, yeah, they have to, you know, get all the, they got to see if there's any booze down there that they can have. 
that might still be good. That's what they have to do. That's what I would. That would actually be the first thing I do is look for jars of uh, yeah, moonshine. Look for a little moonshine. Like, that, that shit doesn't go bad, does it? I don't think so. It's yeah. such high octane. I mean, that shit's gonna last for a while. All right, guys, that's gonna do it for tonight. Thank you very much. We really appreciate uh, all your time, energy, money, and uh, promotion of the program. Thank you. Uh, very, very cool. And again, April, unbelievable job. Ah, uh, well, uh, unbelievable story, Rich. Getting the show on the air at 7 o'clock. That was, was very fun. cool. A nice um, cold open. Yeah. <laughs> uh, thank you, guys. Appreciate it. We will talk to you tomorrow morning. Johnny and I will be back at 6 a.m. Talk to you then.